So, um, Alfred. Yes. I'm up first. Yes, yeah, you're first because right. I know you probably got to go to bed right. to be up to plow, right? Yeah, it's going to be a long day tomorrow, I think. Yeah. But. Roads, when I came down the roads weren't too bad, but it was snowing at my house, as you probably know, and then raining right. down here. Mm. Yeah. So we'll probably be the higher elevation part. That's what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. It's very wet, sticky snow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the wind's going to blow. Yep. Early uh, start on winter. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, not letting up. Mm -hmm. No. But everything's holding up so far. Okay, good. Yep. And the uh, spare truck is still, still alive and well. Sparing. <laughs> still sparing along? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, uh, we had a little trouble with it last week. Yeah. Um, but we got over that and had to wait for the park to come. It was a coolant line that broke off from the motor. Yeah. So I had to uh, had to wait for the park to come. And once it came, then we got it back together. And, uh, it's going yeah. strong now. Okay, great. Yep. yep. What you got tonight? Um, well, I've got some information on mowers. Uh, I talked to HP Fairfield, which they rent them um, throughout the summer, and they have some that they're they're upgrading their fleet, so they've got several that are for sale. See, so that the, these would be used ones. Then. Used ones, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, they're two, 2015, 2016, there's one 2018. Hmm. Um, but they're all slightly more money than what we were thinking. Like how much? Um, well, there's a 15 that is 88,000. That's a 2015, is uh, that what you mean? Yes, 2015. Okay. And then there's a 2018, which is 109,000. But that's tractor and mower, that's all ready to go, whereas you know, John. The 2015 was just the tractor. No, no, no. All of these are all set up with the, with the mowers. Why are they getting rid of the 2018? That's a good question. I don't. I don't know that. Um, Maybe they just do it like every year. Yeah, I think it, as long as they find a buyer for a, for a second hand one, they'll, yeah. then they'll upgrade theirs and buy a new one. Yeah. But he did tell me that it's time sensitive because they need like six months to order a new one. So they would want us to commit to this before they would, you know, before they could order a new one. Well, yeah, we we can't we can't oh, I know, I know. That's definitely yeah, a problem. You know. The only thing until right. March. But, um, but anyway, that's sort of what I've got. And I did get a price for a new f mower. So if we bought the tractor that John was referring to and put a mower on it, the mower itself is like 50 grand for a brand new mower. This would be a new mower. <clears throat> um, and then he also told me that you got to be careful of which tractor you buy because it has to be uh, able to mount a pump on the front of it, like a hydraulic pump. Oh, okay, to make it go up and down. Well, there's all kinds of pistons on this mower, so yeah. it, it requires a lot more, pist you know, pump power. So, and not all tractors are equipped to accept the pump on the front of it. So that's just one caution that he gave me. Uh, I mean, I think if we were going to do this, it would be better to just buy one all set up and right, yeah, ready all to ready go. go. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I I typed up the draft warning. An article it doesn't have a number yet, but I put in an article for the sum no, type of to purchase a tractor with attachments. Is that the right way to word it? Right, or sure. Yeah. To aid in to aid in and allow for more opportunities to cut and prevent the spread of invasive species. So, and that's just a, this is just a draft, so yeah. anything can change. But um, so it's on there. So I think we need to. Find a, so a reasonable number, not greater than maybe, or not to yeah. exceed the amount of. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to look at too. You know, it's I mean, we can look at these this number to buy the machine, but then we've got, you know, man time. We've got 
maintenance. We've got extra right. insurance that we're going to have to pay for. Right. Um, regular upkeep on a machine like this. So it's, you know, it's kind of, it just keeps building up, you know. Right. Uh, but. Um, yeah, but if we put down just the amount not to exceed just to purchase it, we know we're going to have yeah. maintenance and some additional man hours to, to operate it and things like that. Right, right. Um, now, can we so, use it for anything else besides mowing? Um, Would we have any other uses for it, if people ask? John was talking about using it for trimming, too. Yeah, oh, that's right, the, the limbs. The limbs, the higher up limbs. Right. Uh, if you get the right type of mower, um, then you can go after some of those some of that brush that's up there. Yeah, okay. Um, like a rotary mower would be much more aggressive than, uh, than a, uh, the other style. There's a rotary mower and there's a flail mower. So the flail mower you wouldn't want to put into the brush. That's more for just So these used ones, which grass. which mower do they have? The flail mower? They've got some of each. Okay. Um, the 2018 was a rotary mower. The 2016 is a flail mower. So they're 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 mixed up. Uh -huh. But there's six tractors here to choose from. And this is only one company. There uh -huh. there are other companies that I can investigate if if we want to continue to move forward. I think what we're looking for probably is some kind of an amount to put on a warning. Yeah. So. Well. Um, and would we have to pay out? Wait, is there? Do they have payment options where you know you pay it out over so many years? You know. Um, yes. Well, they they actually this company actually leases them also, hmm. so you could lease a brand new one. Lease to buy. Lease to buy, and after the seven years of leasing it, you own it. So it's the same idea as as financing payment. one. Seven year lease to purchase. Okay, that might be an option. Yeah. And how much would that be? You know? uh, they are a brand new one is one hundred and fifteen to one hundred twenty thousand. East, depending on what option you go with and the tractor and how it's all set up. East Montpelier just bought one and they were one hundred and twenty thousand, I think, for theirs. But then the annual for a, a lease, one hundred and twenty divided by seven. Yeah. Well, roughly. Roughly, I would assume, and I'm not and sure if, if, because it's a lease, if there's a break in the in the cost. You know, you, you might not look at it the same as if you were financing it. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If if you're financing it, you would take the 120 and divide it by seven. But because it's a lease, they still own that tractor. Right. right. You know, we're just unless leasing we want to buy it out. Unless we right. So it's not really a lease to own. It's a lease with an option to buy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Lease purchase option. Um, okay. Well, that's helpful. So that's something to look at. Something yeah. you know. Um, I myself, I would rather do something new, just because of the the wear and tear that this machine goes through. Um, but it might be a big, <coughs> a big bite for us to do right now. I don't you know. Yeah, we might be able to do the least least to purchase option, and spread it out over seven years. Right. And when that's leased to purchase, we know we're going to pay some interest, probably not a lot, but some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so I can look further into that and get some more details about that. Um, okay. But, but the 60000 that we threw out. That's way low. That's low. Yeah. Way low. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's probably other options, but when you start getting getting to mm -hmm. you know that kind of money that lower amount of money you're going to be tinkering on it all the time mm -hmm. it's going to be worn out it's going to be a big problem well yeah it's always nicer to have a new you know a new thing than a used one yeah yeah um just because you don't know how many other people used it and how they used it right you know right and that's the thing with these leases that right. they've, they've been leased out so there's been all kinds of operators in it and you know that's right. sometimes it's people don't always treat about. it as nice as if it was theirs right Okay, nice work. What else have you got for us? Uh, so then, I've got the bill for the for the repair, the motor repair on the on the lemon. The lemon. On the lemon. <laughs> so, I 
I'm hoping to, I'm going to ask you guys to authorize Sandra to pay them before the order. I've got it on an order, but the orders don't go through mm -hmm. until next week. So I'm wondering if you can authorize her to pay that before, so that she can send a check to them. Out of, out of sequence? Out of sequence. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty well spelled out there. There is some other parts that I bought. But if you look up at the top where I've got it circled, it says motor. That's the that's the cost of the motor. That one there, twenty six. Twenty six and some change, yeah. That's the total. That's the total for the motor. Okay. So what are we? What's the total we're looking at? Yeah, where? They're right at the bottom, twenty nine. Nine eighty eight oh three. That's what the check's going to be written to. For. Have you given her a heads up at all on this? Talk to her today. Okay. Yeah, and she asked me to ask you to. Let her authorize it out of sequence. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, just because of the timing and and whatnot. See, and the the rush for this is because they're not going to let uh, that truck be sold until they get their money for this. Alfred, do you have something that actually shows where the invoice came from? Yeah, it doesn't have a letter. Yeah, letter. Letter. You want to see how you could have made this up all by yourself. Well, that's the original right there. Then, so it doesn't have any, like, from? Like a letterhead, Alfred. Like, so. Uh, you see what I mean? Like, the, like, like, was there something on the top that, like, had yes. the name of the business? Yeah, yeah. Name and I, send, I send that with the check. No, so but what's, 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 Sharon is getting at is the invoice doesn't have the name of the company and address and all that on it. Do you have one that has that? Uh, yes, of course I do, but. I'm, I offer it. I'm sorry no. about my joke. I was just joking. You know that, right? When I said you could have made it up. I'm only joking. But that, that's like so that's the what uber conservative. Like. That's for other work, but that's what it would look like. Because I think we're going to need an invoice that has their, their J, J and B emblem and all Did that you, stuff. Are you saying that you sent that along to Sandra already? Like the top part of the stub? Uh, no, but I will tomorrow. It's part of my work orders. This this is the actual invoice for the truck repair. Not the whole invoice. That so explains probably the everything last that page. they explains everything they've done to the truck, why it went in, what the complaint was, why and what they did to it. So I think we want to authorize payment of that and not I don't know where you got that other paper from, but can I have that one up back? So this one has the Repair order total twenty six eight eighty three, and that says twenty nine eight nine eighty eight. You bought some <coughs> other things too. There yeah. are other parts for other vehicles that I bought from them. Oh, which other is vehicles. still this is a statement. This is a statement that comes in right. from them every month. So what happened to the top piece of that? I've ripped it off, and it goes when we write a check. It's their remnant slip. So okay, that's so, the piece that we're missing. That's the piece that, Sam's okay. talk, that Sharon's talking about. Right, but it's the same as that right there, except for this is a statement. That is an invoice. Right, so you want us to authorize the in, invoice. So I think the minutes could say that the select board authorizes payment to J&B Truck Center for a total of $29,988.03 to pay for the truck motor for the 2012 International. International. And, and, and other, other, other parts as noted. Right. So the total for the motor, let's let's make sure we put the total for the motor. Twenty six eight eighty three seventy eight. But the total bill is twenty nine nine eighty eight oh three. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Katie can give. Katie will have the minutes by tomorrow morning. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to read that back so it makes sense mm -hmm. to us? The select board authorized payment to J and B Trucking Center for the amount of $29,988.03 to pay for the truck motor for the 2012 International and other parts as noted. 
The total for the motor is $26,883.78, but the total bill is $29,988.03. Yes. And you can put where you said, but the total bill is, uh -huh. and you can write which includes other parts needed for other equipment, truck, other equipment or truck maintenance. Right. right. Yeah, this is just the monthly statement. Yeah. And I okay. tried to separate it out. I was going to do it on two different orders, have the motor on, us, mm -hmm. on, on its own, but I'd already had this all made out, mm -hmm. and so I just tried to make more sense of it. Okay. Does that work for folks? Yep. Yeah. All right. So is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. And then this is our key. The, the top copy. one. The, yeah. Yes. That you can have. Okay. So we can just maybe put that with the orders. And um, Sandra will have a copy also. We want to just do one for her. Sign it. Sure. So can you just um, and give us a little bit more details about this truck is gone? It's at J and B. It went to a broker or something. It's 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 still at J and B. It's at J and B's. Um, they told me they weren't going to let it go. Yep. Until they we paid this bill. Right. Um, I've our, it's all lined up with the broker. He's got the, the, the copy of the title, yep. and we had to make him an invoice yep. from this office. Mm -hmm. um, so he's got all of that. As soon as I can get up there and bring the plow, bring the wing, strip the parts that I need off the truck, like the radio and yep. you know, some yep. of the tools, yeah. then he'll come and buy the truck, and it will be out of our hair yep. forever. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So this will come out of out of our truck repair or equipment re repair line. line item. Okay. We should probably we'll put a date on this. Sure. All right. Anything else? Um, yep. One more thing. <laughs> I've run across a very nice young gentleman that wants to work part time for us. Um, I worked in a little bit. Um, in my own business, let him drive my truck some. I seemed, I was very happy with him. He seemed to be very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. um, so he's looking for part-time work, uh, filling in, plowing, and doing what Would we Would he did. be the person that could be the rotation weekend person so you guys can get a weekend off? Yeah, I mean, that's that's sort of we, how the last, year, the last couple of years, we haven't had mm -hmm. somebody really that you could use. Right, right. we ha actually had that conversation in March. We said, right. we don't have to worry about it now. Right. And the right. solution came before we were worried about it again. Right. So who, right. what's his name and where does he live? Uh, he lives in Cabot. His name is Nathan Smith. Uh, he was recommended to me by Paul Stecker. Uh, he grew up, he was he worked on a farm for I don't know, several years. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a welder, certified welder. So oh, that's, that's a handy. huge asset for us. Mm -hmm. um, Last Wednesday, the day before Thanksgiving, I had a couple things broke, and I kept him busy all day just welding. Good. Um, so he's a pretty good mechanic. Mm -hmm. He's uh, willing to learn. Um, I've got him drug tested already, so he's coming in tomorrow to have an experience with the snow. I'm going to have him drive, and Paul will ride with him mm -hmm. in case he has questions or not, just so he can. Um, and I'll just, I'm going to keep the other two, but... Uh, I was going to say, what happens to Ed and... Um, well, Ed, Ed is kind of getting ready to retire, full-time. Full-time yes. retire. Yeah, yeah. And Dana um, has got his other job anyway. So. Yeah, he's got his other job, and it's a little bit difficult to work him in, mm -hmm. because two days for him is just completely gone. Right. So, I, you know, those two days, and I have to keep track of it because it staggers throughout the week. It's like some days it's Monday, Tuesday, some days it's... So this guy doesn't have another job? He does odd jobs. He's, okay. he's a welder, so he yeah. works on people's equipment. Um, and I'm whatever. just thinking, I wonder if he's somebody we might use if we get this mower next summer to do the, the mowing be, for the invasives. He kind of would thing. be good for that, I'm certain, because he's, like I said, he worked on a farm. Mm -hmm. He worked on the carpenter farm in, in Cabot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Tom probably knows him. Yes, I would vouch for him. Oh yeah, Good. Yeah. highly. Yeah. And we have. I mean, we're already using. Um, thanks, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> we're 
we're already using Dana and Ed, and we're okay with the wages budget line item. Right. I mean, it's, it's really, it's just another body. It's not like right. it's, I'm putting three part-time guys on. It's right. more, I have more chances of getting table. one, getting one of them to come in. And what are we looking at for hours? Because we don't want to get him, if he's part-time, right. he doesn't have Right, we've got to keep him under 30 hours, right? i got to look at the personnel policy right there. I that's think that's correct. 30 or 32, somewhere in there. So, uh, or it might, might be less than that. Something kicks look. in at 24. Yeah, I was just thinking, I was thinking something about 24. So maybe the, the v Vmers or whatever. The Vmers might yeah. kick in at well, after 24. Well, if you can look that up, and I'll just I'll follow that. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, if you've got somebody that's ready, willing, and able. And yeah. Um, he's eager to work. He's easy to get along right. with. Um, you know, I think that people will like him. Good for you, Alpha. Good yeah. for you. Yep. Yeah. Spot a good one. Really yeah. Man. I mean, well, yeah, it's done. actually Paul. I can't take all yeah. the credit. Paul's well, the one that. I mean, we have some really good people now. We have Paul. We have Jake. Right. right. Um, Bruce. I mean, I think we have a really good crew. I like that you, folks in your crew are willing to recommend folks. It's not just recommending him to us; it's recommending us to him. Mm -hmm. And I right. think that that speaks volumes for your leadership. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, because people really would like working here. Yeah. 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 Even though it's a hard job, it is and it's a, hard a lot job. of hours, and it's a lot of you know but scattered if, hours. But so. this will help you guys to get a real weekend right. break, which is yep. really important yep. from my perspective that you get a break. Right. Right. <coughs> Sounds good. Yeah, so he, like I said, he's coming in tomorrow to to drive the truck with Paul riding with him. Uh -huh. He's already ridden with Paul a couple of times. Uh, a couple of times he just did it on his own time. Spent a, spent a whole day here with us. Wow. And said he didn't need to get paid, didn't want to get paid. He just wanted the experience. Good for him. So he's so. Wow, that's young, impressive. Young guy. He's yeah. he's. Uh, I'm gonna give him 32, 33. So lots of energy, lots good. of. Yeah. Great. He likes to talk a lot too, but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Someone's yeah. going to do the talk. That's right. right. That's right. That's well, right. Great. So, yeah, I, I think he's going to be a good team player. Yeah. I really do. Well, and that's really important that he kind of fits, that he fits in. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Well, good work. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Nice job. Um, so, other than that, what's his name again? Nathan, Nathan Smith. Smith. Nathan. Yep. Nathan Smith. He'll be in the minutes. <laughs> Nathan yeah, right. Smith. Right. Yeah. Um, I invited him to come tonight so you guys could meet him, but I, when I talked to him earlier, he didn't get that part of the message. Well, that's okay. You guys are going to probably be out plowing early in the morning. So. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, I'll bring him in at a later date so you guys can meet him. But okay. I think you'll like him. There's no policy that calls out 30 hours. 30 hours? 30 hours. Okay, so thirds is the limit. I thought that's what it yeah. was. But. That we should but I want to double to check on the, another layer for Beamers. Really the there is a 24 there. thing, yeah, and I, I think that's the Beamers. So maybe keep it under 24 until we check. Okay. Yeah. Because they're the state has got to be different than us, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah very good. Good. Uh, be safe. So no complaints. No. I mean, I didn't do much this weekend because it was cold. I know. I saw you guys came good. by. You guys came by my house one time and dumped some dirt. Yeah. On the road. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then of course it rained and washes it all off. So. Right. We fixed our pothole on Tucker Road. I think I've yes. seen you since, but thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lose a whole yeah. car. You could have. No, yeah, I tripped on it a few times. I walked in the dog in the yeah. dark. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. just brought the. I'm not the only one who walks the dog in the dark. So. <laughs> yeah. It was a little bit icy. I left out seven. You know, on Sunday I worked this weekend, so we had the rain, and I just took my time and put it in low yeah. gear, Adamant Road down into Adamant Village. But, yeah, um, Sunday morning they were a little yeah, slick. It was Sunday we morning. Went, we went out and put sand, but it was a little bit later than normal. Yeah. Because it's Sunday and it was, you know. And right. everybody's sleeping except me. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> and the deer hunters. Right. Well, I was up. I yeah. was up with you. <laughs> but, Thanks, uh, Alfred. Yeah, yeah very thank good. you very thank you. much. Okay, have a good evening. John McCullough. Yes, ma'am. So it's been a while since we had you in, so I thought we'd.
do an official update to the board. Because Cliff and I have been I was gonna say it's pretty doing, much for doing some for updates. Rose and Karen, yeah. <laughs> well, we're, um, we're all ears. Well the septic uh, was a big issue. Septic was a big issue. We explored sites, other sites besides the town hall site, looking for a place that might have more capacity or, or just serve our serve our purposes better. We couldn't find anything. Uh, across the road didn't work. Across the other side of the brook didn't work. So when Don Marsh took a, a second look at the town office site, our town hall site, he said, okay, I can make it work. It's the same system, basically a Presby Mound system as designed as similarly to one for a two bedroom house. Uh, we'll have a, a septic tank that will pump into that disposal field in doses. We're allowed to do that because we're a municipality. So it's as small a system as we can get. Um, and it, it will probably cost less than putting that same system at the other sites because we don't have to bore right. under the brook or bore under And we don't have to buy an easement. Yeah, and, uh, and the road crew, they're doing our site work. They'll be installing it. So as things go, this is going to be the, the most affordable mound system I think we could look at, mm -hmm. possibly look at. And this, what capacity is this? Okay, um, I should get it in writing so we all know. But he's aware that weekends could host large events, events at 130 or possibly more. At 130, I think I've explained before, right, we need we're to get compelled porta -potties. to put porta potties. But if we have a music or a theatrical event with 130 people, we don't have the porta potties. Um, but then we have to pump it? No, no, it, it works. And I think we can do two of these a week. I think that's what it's good for, the, yeah. this two bedroom press week. Well, he'll give us the details, right? He will give us the details, so we'll know exactly how many events per week we can have with an occupancy of 130. And this is with an understanding that there's no, no like at intermission people come down and just drink beers and eat right. food and stuff. It's just, you know, maybe a glass of wine if it's fancy, but no, there's no, we're not, we're not using a lot of water on the site. Right. And we're not having a dishwasher. Right. We don't have a dishwasher, don't have showers, of course. Right. So things look good. Um, I do understand that there's that people want to look at how to schedule events, so knowing how many large events we can host in, in, in what periods of time, I'll get that from Don. We'll, yeah. we'll get it in writing and, uh, <coughs> and basically design, build our schedule around that. Um, so that's good news. That is Except good news. Good it, was news. A little, it was a little well, unnerving at, for a few I'm weeks I'm not sure here. why we had to explore the alternate sites. I guess Don was just looking for some place that was better than what he found at the at the town hall site. And right. When nothing else came, showed up, he said, okay, well, we'll just make it work at the town hall. Right. Um, and then we had the asbestos thing, which is all resolved. Asbestos Thank is you done. For taking care of that. Everybody's accepted my apologies for being late and dealing with this. Oh. It's like, not like we haven't had how much stuff going on with the town hall? It was just an oversight. I, I was trying to avoid the six hundred dollars it was going to cost to prove a negative or disprove a negative. Right. But anyway, we, we were compelled we were, we, to do we, it. We proved the negative. Yeah. So, or the so negative. After we got the reports and engineering is now certified. There's no right. asbestos in the building. Officially certified. We Officially, already knew that. We knew it. We knew it. And deconstruction works never had an issue with it. Nobody had an issue with it. I know. No asbestos. So that's done. The well, we have a uh, Onion River well and spring hooked up the water supply line from mm -hmm. the well to the what would be the mechanical room, and uh, and they were concerned that the pipe that we had installed wasn't adequate to handle the psi that they're comfortable with the, the pressure, but they were able to slip a higher psi pipe in the conduit we ran. Mm -hmm. So. Now we've got a high PSI pipe in a protective plastic conduit, so we have a, a water supply pipeline which will last forever. Well, and then we talked at one of the town hall committee meetings that, you know, the weather hasn't cooperated, well, and, and was and our the 
Are we going to get slowed down on the renovation? We have. We're, we're probably four to six weeks behind schedule right. because of the weather. October was terrible. November is even worse. Our I don't think it's going to get any better. It actually, there's, the Monday looks good. Monday, I'm counting on Perry showing up and doing some work. You think it's going to be long? And Ernie and I, Ernie is Green Line Builders, who's been a, there's no formal contract with, with them, but right now they're, they're moving in and working. And when we have details of the arrangement that the town has with Green Line, we'll let the select board know. Mm -hmm. But right now we're working with Green Line, it's Ernie Parish. And uh, I'm working with Ernie to put the piers in under the front porch. Right. We're doing that concrete form work ourselves. And because we have to backfill the front, we have to protect the foundation that we put in. And is that what, do we use some of those hay bales for that? Well, right now it's protect, we've got hay bales and tarps to protect it from extreme cold. Right. But that's just sort to. of a temporary thing. Right. When we get these piers put in, then we can backfill and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Right. So that'll be happening uh, tomorrow. And Jamie closed up the, covered up the windows, or you did? Jamie's working on the windows. But they're, but the holes are covered right now, which they weren't until. It's incredibly gloomy inside. Mm -hmm. So Ernie's going to be stringing up temporary lights. Christmas lights? No, but at least you'd be able to walk around without right. falling. Yeah. And uh, and if, uh, if Perry Concrete can't get there and pour the uh, interior piers, there are six piers inside for the vertical mm -hmm. posts that hold the second floor up. If Perry can't get to it, Ernie and I are going to do that as well. So we can, we have to. Uh, we'll call, we'll, we'll do, we'll, the forms are already in. Yeah. Andy and I put the forms in. So if Ernie and I put the steel in, we can call for the truck and pour that concrete. Then we can rake the gravel and compact it and start prepping it for the slab. Right. We need I'll do some that more help for it if you want. Pour what? Get ready to pour the concrete. I'll come down and help pour it. Well, I don't. I mean, we're, we're not even think. We're not doing the slab. There's no way that we we're preparing the pier slab. But the piers are just three foot by three foot. There's just six of them. Oh, that's nothing. No. no it's nine, think, nine yards of concrete, so it's more than we want to mix in a wheelbarrow. Right. But yeah. it still should be easy enough to to Get place. A truck. Yeah, we'll call a truck and wheelbarrow it into the farther ones, but. I mean, the amount of volunteer time that has gone into this project, I mean, unless we have a better idea because we're at every single building committee meeting, it's just phenomenal the amount of time that people have volunteered to this project just to get it to where it's at right now. So I'm, I'm redefining the role of architect. You are. Yes. Architect, <laughs> general contractor. Yeah, hands on, Right. I mean, John has shoveled I don't know how much stuff by hand. I mean, it's just amazing. Okay, so so I mentioned Ernie. Oh, they've already they moved in and they started patching. Uh, uh, when Geddes was there to lift the building, they had to punch a bunch of holes in the wall to stick their steel beams through. And Ernie's guys are trimming the clapboards back, and uh, they're going to replace the sheathing and start patching in those clapboards. And they're also patching in around the base of the building. So in a week, the lower floor should be pretty much closed in. Um, no raccoons or critters can, and uh, we get lights in there, keep the snow and wind from blowing through, and get the piers in, and so we can uh, so we can insulate the floor and, and and then just wait for Perry to show up and do the flat work. Yeah, I know. And Ernie was kind of beating his head against the wall, trying to get Perry's to. We got a bunch of people in touch with Perry. Perry knows that this is really important. I've learned that Perry makes a living doing concrete in the summer and plowing in the winter. Oh. And so if we have three or four inches of snow, he's plowing. We're not going to see him. Yeah. Well, we won't see him tomorrow, will we? No, we won't. We, were, we were, he, he had promised he would be there. We're not going to see him tomorrow. Because right? it's snowing. Right. Yeah. It's snowing. We're not going to see him tomorrow. But well, that's that, what we got. We get when we're trying to use as much I know. really local well-priced well, contractor that's you know like i said ernie and i are going to be doing the work and and what's for what it's worth we'll keep track of our hours we'll yes. keep track of the material costs when we put this concrete in and we're going to remove that from the from the total price that perry said he was going to do this absolutely. for absolutely because we we keep doing all this stuff to make it easier for him but at some point we got to be reimbursed for 
Right? No, we can't be paying if you guys are doing. No, you it. don't want to pay us and then pay Perry for something right. that you exactly. give. So exactly. that's how that's going. Um, quick finish. I'm looking at my notes. The septic system will be located in the far west corner of the building, which is really good uh, of the site which means that we can probably fit between 15 and 20 cars in the summer around the back of the building. Now, is it the far northwest? Is that, that past, the, past the Edible Garden people? Yeah, it's past the Edible Garden. It's, it's sort of right where, uh, right where Elmsley Road comes down, right across okay. from Ernie's house. It's okay. going to be right in tucked in. We have to stay 50 feet away from the brook, oh, right, but it's going to be right there. It's going to be right, right at that 50 foot mark. But that gives us somewhere between 15 and 20 parking places in the summer in the field behind the building. Nice. It's important. It, it is it important. It relates to how we have larger events. Right. Uh, what else? I said the well's hooked up. That's good. Uh, the conduit for the uh, power into the building and the phone into the building, that's been buried, so we could probably actually get a phone and internet hooked up in there in the next couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, I thought somebody on the... Did we give, was Scott going to do that, contact consolidated? Yeah, but at that point, well, all he was going to do was hook up the router sort of on the telephone pole that's out there right now. Mm -hmm. But now that we've got the conduit buried, we mm -hmm. can actually sneak a line into the main building. And Dan... Um, Dan Cowan's going to do Cowan. that. Yeah. Okay. And well, I'm sure that this will come up Wednesday to get somebody to maybe take up calling and consolidate or something. Yep. And as soon as... Uh, as soon as the building is buttoned up, these holes that Getty's punched in the sidewall and the stuff down at the bottom, as soon as that's patched up, Dan Cohen can come in and start doing the rough wiring for the, uh, for the ground floor. Good. And he'd like to. Great. So there's progress that no one's going to see. I'm going to call for a dumpster. It's time for a dumpster because Ernie's guys are going to start stripping away the clabberts and things where mm -hmm. the addition's going to plug into the back. Right. Now, and I also checked on that insurance question that we had, um, and as long as I got to, I think I got to circle back around one more time, but we're really just renovating. Yes. So, and everybody has, all the contractors have their own insurances, yes. so I think we're good from what I can gather with my conversation with VLCT. Perfect. Perfect. That's it. That's the update. I wish I could say we were six weeks farther along, but we're not. Um, no, I mean, we had a really good run. <laughs> we did. Things were going so, <laughs> so well for a while. We, so we, we kept saying, I wonder when the shoe is going to drop, and yeah, it did, the weather. Well, Roger Hill's mm -hmm. forecast said we're going to get front loaded, which we are right now. Right. The middle of the winter is going to be very mild and no snow. Then we're going to get it at the end, too. Okay. Oh. Well, I am so, counting on it. We're, that's what he after said. After all this, we should expect a reasonable couple of weeks where, you know, as long as the nighttime temperature doesn't drop too far below 20 and the daytime's up above freezing, mm -hmm. we can do the concrete work we mm -hmm. want to do. Yeah. And it is all inside. It will be right. outside. Yeah. So yeah. even if it's rainy, more than, you know, rainy, as long as it's warm, we can do it. Right. Good. Thank you for coming down. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks so much for that update. Yeah. It's really exciting. I wish, Very, I wish really we could appreciate more was done. Everything. Wow. I think we've gotten a lot done for a group of volunteers. We have. So far, I mean, considering the fact that the town's acted as its own general contractor up to this point, mm -hmm. we've actually come We've gotten a lot done. Oh, um, if you do get in the barn down there and you need an extra hand, you should give me a call. Do what? If you do get in the barn down there and you need an extra hand a day or something. Okay. Call me. That'd be great, Jason. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> That's it, folks. Okay, Thank John. John. All right, Thank you so much. Good night. Night. Take care. You too. Take care. Okay, I don't really, the only thing I can tell you about Act 46 is that um, the State Board of Education voted to merge the five towns into one district, and you know the rest of what happens after that. With the taking on the debt, the school situation, the money that we had set aside for. Um, not purchases, but for maintenance. So, and then the we have the appeal that was filed with the Superior Court, so I haven't heard anything about that yet. So, 
Not good news. news. Not good news. JC and Bill, would you like to join us? Or? Yeah, sure. <sighs> so you note on the agenda, this is just a preliminary yep. discussion because we haven't gotten to I understand. That. Who's going to use it yeah. and when? I mean, we have people that want to do weddings and we aren't doing anything. Um, I just thought it would be useful for the select board. I mean, I'm not. Do you know mm -hmm. everybody? You want us to introduce I'm ourselves? I'm Rose Alja. Yeah, I remember Rose. Yeah. <laughs> Cliff and what, what's your name? Tom. 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 Lashley. And JC Meyer. JC yeah, Meyer. I know JC. It only confuses me when he sends an email and one part says John and then the other says JC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's the, the my email address is Myers John, 283, but I always go by JC. JC. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, if you say, if I see hey, John, I if probably I see wouldn't even turn John, around. John Myers, I'm like, who's that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah who's that? Yeah, well, no, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nice yeah, to see yeah. you. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, my, I understand that you know, I understand that the select board has got a long, you know, there's a lot to be done, a lot to be discussed about the whole thing, but the idea of it being a performance space is, of course, really, it's really great for Tom and for me. I've written a, a play, and I want to produce the play. Um, that was part of my email, was just yeah. trying to nail down a date that that might be possible. And that, so that's sort of like, obviously dependent, having heard all these discussions beforehand, it's dependent on where the building is and what the other needs for the building are. But we are trying to sort of, one of the things we're hoping to do is nail down uh, some weekends to uh -huh. do this performance. And that my, my desire would be to do it, to open it here and, you know, in Calais, um, if it's possible. Um, so at this point, that in the email I was indicating third and fourth, third and fourth week, I think, of October mm -hmm. in um, um, 09, so next October. So that was one. That was one thing. Just sort of trying to figure out whether that's going to be possible in terms of the construction schedule and whether yeah. it makes sense for us to do it. The other, the other part of it was just to hear Tom tell us about how it works the with Plainfield. Plainfield Little Theater. So that that's a you know that's how another town arranges it, and it's sort of right. just an information thing. And I realize that, that there's a lot of interested parties here, and I'm hoping to, I'm, what I'm advocating for is a real open process where. Various people who are interested in, We're going to be the, in, in for that. performances or mm -hmm. or creating performances or or um, being part of that, people like Morgan Irons, the Blue Barn Players, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, well, just to have a, a broad discussion about what do we, how do we operate this? How do we how do we operate this as well, a I think, right? And the, the the renovation committee and the select board, to some degree, realize that we're going to have to have like a friends of kind of group to help manage the town hall when it's done. But I just want to be really clear, the select board, I think it's all in agreement. First and foremost, it's a town office, Absolutely. town community yep. space first. I think everybody involved understands that the priority for that space right. is, is town is function. town use. I don't think there's anybody that doesn't understand right. that. And we have done, and I printed you guys, everybody a copy here. We had, Ar have you heard of Argon Arrow, Lisa Ryan? They did a study. You want to pass these around, Cliff? And she gave us the town some recommendations about just what you're talking about. But it would be nice to know, to some degree, um, how the Plainfield people, when obviously they're going sure. through yeah. what we're going to be going through at some point here. Yeah. Well, it's a it's a, a, a rather similar situation. Their town hall was in disrepair and uh, wasn't usable. Mm -hmm. It was uh, used for town meetings for time immemorial. And so they had to find a new place to do town meetings. And then the town had to make a decision about what to do. And uh, it was, you know, it was a big, a big uh, deal. And the town did decide in the end to uh, keep the town hall and to preserve it and to put the money into it to fix it up and so now they had this beautiful town hall and Yes, it, it just the same way that you're talking about it the priority it, It's it's owned by the town mm -hmm. and the town has its town meetings there and if it needs to use it for any town events It gets That's priority first, over right. everybody else. Absolutely um, but the, you know they they also have 
their own town clerk's office mm -hmm. and they have other spaces. Like we do. Like you do. So it's very similar then. So it's a very similar situation. The only difference that I see is just that the uh, Plainfield Town Hall is usable year round. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I'm not sure if that's the long range plan here or not, but from what I understand, that would be. It might be like happy. phase three. Pay might phase down the road. Down, like right. we, we're considering this to be phase two. Right. And phase three, if there's you know, money, it might you know, include fixing up the upstairs to be year round. But right yeah. now, we're thinking yeah. three seasons. Right, so just three seasons. So, um, so anyway, so then they, they, you know, they had this, this, great, this great public space, and they didn't, the town didn't really want the um, hassle of managing it. And so a bunch of citizens got together and just formed a nonprofit mm -hmm. corporation called the Friends of the Town Hall Opera House. Kind of a mouthful, but it has worked very well. Um, it's a not it's a five hundred one c three corporation, so we get charitable contributions, tax deductible. The town does, or the, the friends? The friends do. Okay. So it's a five hundred one c three. So it's a nonprofit entity. It's a nonprofit. Which has it, which can have a checkbook and a, you know, so it can and have they, expenses. And they manage and the income. calendar basically. And so what we do is we we essentially act as the sort of custodian of the town hall. And we do all the maintenance on it. We do all the scheduling. We, you know, we collect the rent. Of course, the rent goes to the town, you know, not to us. Um, mm -hmm. It's all volunteer work. So there's enough people in town willing to volunteer. I thought I heard that some people there got paid for doing this. Nope. Nobody on nobody at the fr in the friends. No, nobody who is part of the friends gets paid. Oh, okay. uh, there is. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not privy to all the ins and outs of it because I'm just on the friends but I think there is a, somebody who's paid to do some of the maintenance of it but basically um, you know we 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 get charitable contributions to pay for the expenses of running the place mm -hmm. and we also get grants and other, other things and then there's also a, uh, a concert series that the friends sponsors and we collect the income from that after paying our expenses so we make a little profit on mm -hmm. that. Do you and have access to the friends bylaws? Yep, I do. I prepared them and I did all the legal work to set the thing up, you know, pro bono, which I'd be happy to do here too. Are they all on the one C three stuff? Are they on the plane is the are the bylaws and the use policy or I'm sure you must have a use policy on the yep. website? Yeah uh, we do, we do have a website. I'm not sure if all of that I'm sure we can on get it, but I can here. get it. Yeah, it might be helpful sure. to have copies of that. Absolutely. So. If you and send I, it electronically, then we all could sure. Absolutely. It. Yes, be I'd great. be happy to. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, anything great. you want. Mm -hmm. It's all, there's no secrets. Thank you. <laughs> well, and, yeah, and if you've already done it, there's, you know. Yeah, we're not reinventing the wheel. Right. right. Mm -hmm. um, but it works really well. And um, we do fundraising. Um, you could actually support the building. I think there's a potential for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a very, there's a lot of creative people in this town. Oh, there is. Oh, yeah. And, right. if, and if there's a little income coming in from ticket receipts, mm -hmm. you know, there's also a really interested audience here. There's people that want to go to performances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's really nice to, to go locally. Yeah. You don't have to go into yeah. town. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to me, it's really exciting. Like, I mean, you know, I'm as a sort of a, I'm a young fella, so I'm a new, it's a new playwright, you know, but to, uh, to do a performance in the town of Callis and to mount it here would mean a lot to me. It would be really great to do it here. Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether that's going to work out timing wise or not, but yeah, I, I, you know, like I said, I just don't know. We, yeah, mean, we're, we're already behind now. We thought, right. we, like I said, we were doing. What was the original stuff. completion schedule? I don't. Know. I don't. Because Chris Colt still thinks maybe he's going to do a musical in the spring. No, that's not happening. We already told him that's not yeah. happening. Yeah. I mean, if we get in there by October, maybe. See, that's but, what we're hoping for. We will rehearse elsewhere, but perform in the, the third and fourth week of October. See, I just don't know. I would hate to promise you anything and not really know. I mean, we might have a better idea like in, in, January, in January or February when we see how, you know, if we can get the Perrys in, as you heard, for the It pour, might be worth waiting a bit. Pouring. For us, because I mean, what we're facing now is just how to communicate to the people that have done the reading. We did a reading in June. 
of the play and you know we have and obviously this is not a deep concern to the select board but we're just trying to figure out how do we notify the, right, the possible cast right. members whether or not mm -hmm. we're going to do it and where we're going to do it and when we're going to do it so um there's a possibility i suppose of us doing it in plainfield i'm hoping we can do it in callus um mm -hmm. but i guess maybe if there was a point at which you you, you might know more you know if it was mm -hmm. if, if it was like if we knew more by february it might make sense for us to go ahead and Wait a bit. It's, sure. it's really good that you were here. I don't know if you came and early John. by this time, but, but yeah. right. um, pretty much every, if, if not every select board meeting, every other, we get a report. Right. Yeah. And Cliff and I attend all of the town hall mm. committee meetings, and mm, if yeah. John's not here, we can do the update. And it was, like I said, it was really going, you know, full hammer, and then the weather. Yeah. Hit. Yeah. I'm a carpenter. Yeah, 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 I know you are. <laughs> and then now we got this situation trying to get the cement poured, which is critical to being able to move right. forward yeah. on the project. So I appreciate your willingness to volunteer. No, I would. I'd come down and help them out. I'm... Yeah. So, I mean, it's been, like I said, it's been mostly, for the most part, it's been all volunteer stuff. People have put in a ton, yeah. just a ton of time. It's really, a, it's really quite heartwarming when you think about how much time everybody's put into this. So as I think as I think about mounting a production here, you know, I'm thinking about, I mean, it, when I was a kid, I, I worked in um, the Weston Playhouse, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of a, and I also did a, a couple of summers in high school at the what, Wyndham Summer Repertory Theater. So I worked in like theaters with battens and blinds and backstage and like, you know, so obviously this is not that kind of theater, right. but there are features of this building which could, you know, which could enhance its, its, uh, it's um, utility as a as a performance space, right? And but the problem is, all, well, it's not a problem, but the challenge is that all of that requires money. But you can you can actually, if you have a successful performance, you can make some money, and you can put that towards that kind of equipment. Mm -hmm. And that's where having a five hundred one c three, a nonprofit that right. owns it, makes it a lot cleaner. Mm -hmm. Now the town, or the town maybe could even own it too, the equipment. But it would be the if it was a publicly owned yeah, resource like lights, fresnels, licos, blinds, curtains, well, bat, know, lighting battens, all that kind of stuff that a theater needs right. could be owned by the town or by the nonprofit, and it could be publicly accessible. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than having like the situation now is it's already it's already in Nancy's and Chris's personal investment. Right. right. You know, so it's also their personal choice whether they want to use it or not use it or lend it or not lend mm -hmm. it. So the, the theatrical performances there, unless you have your own resources, are dependent on right. whether or not they want to lend their personal private property. Right. You know, so have, being able to own equipment, theater equipment, flats, mm -hmm. you know, uh, sets, things uh, that right. would be a which wonderful be, asset. Right, which could be purchased by a friend's a own. nonprofit. Right, could own it. Yeah, in Plainfield, uh, I mean, the friends don't really own anything. It all belongs to the town. It all belongs to the town, yeah. right? But I we, don't know what that. But we maintain it, and mm -hmm. you know we. But the town owns it. it. The town owns everything. So they're able to. Place. They probably yeah, don't own anything. They're probably able to depreciate it too. Right? Well, they it bought was, the lights and yeah, the stage was, of the town. But it was probably through the friends of the friends bought it. The friends bought it and gave it to the town. I would think. Well, it. I mean, most of it was there to begin with. Oh, oh, but there, there, there have been some renovations. But what if, what if, what if a group, you know, what if a nonprofit went ahead and bought a bunch of stuff? Would it be viable for that nonprofit to own that? We stuff? could, we could. Mm -hmm. I mean, but would we there be an advantage to that? Or would it would be better for the town to own it. You're asking all these questions that you're like, JC's like, we're we're talking about septic. <laughs> I know, I know. And <laughs> we're like He's several steps the down the road. Ah, you got a dream, you got a dream. That's, that's good yeah. because when yeah. when the septic and the pilings and everything are done, and John goes. <laughs> then you know you right. guys will be like okay we'll be ready right. to we got the next vision right. I know you guys you have your hands full I know right. you don't want to you don't want to administer a performance space no so what what I'm hoping is that we can have a real open everybody included everybody wants to be part of it come and have a discussion about how we're going to how we're going to operate let's use the experience of people that have already done it yeah well, and I want, I'd like to get everybody like yeah. you said that's interested but like I said we're still kind of yeah. trying to do sure. budget for town meeting yeah, and sure. town report yeah. and the hall and you're like a hundred miles ahead of us and it's yeah. like whoa yeah. Yeah. but that's good yeah. it's good right. it's good but well on the on the on the long term level I got plenty of you know I'm uh, you know let's just let it evolve 
you know, on the short term level of where this production is going to be mounted, I think that it's worthwhile for us to wait and mm -hmm. see for a couple of months. And, and if it right. looks like we it's viable, have, then October could, be a, yeah. could be a bankable date, then we'll go with it. If not, right. we'll, we'll we've make alternative told, plans. Because we've told people yeah. that wanted to have a wedding there this summer, a couple of different couples, yeah. you know, you better look someplace else because we yeah. can't promise that it's going to yeah. be ready. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well, this, this, you know, this is so, this is through next summer mm -hmm. and into next fall. Yeah, mm -hmm. I So would say. I have hope still <laughs> that it's going to happen. Well, we appreciate your enthusiasm and Very willingness so. to volunteer and to help out. We really appreciate that. Yeah. Just take a look at what they recommended because it may be yeah. very similar yeah. to what you've done in Plainfield. So I'm glad we right. have experience yeah. and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So thank you yeah. very much. So I think if, if you know, if the, you know, just for in terms of further discussion, I mean, if we. If we put out something in Front Porch Forum and contact people, like there are some people I know that are really interested in theater, Morgan on Irons, you know, it does a constant times doing productions, what, four times, five times a year? Not quite. Do it five, four <laughs> plays a year? A few. Lots. Depends um, on the year. And uh, Aaron Galligan, of course, you know, is mm -hmm. really interested in there. So, and I, of course, the Blue Barn Players, who are, yeah. you know, foundational. For right. Well, I think we, around here. I'd like to, Maybe, and before you put anything out on Front Porch Forum, I know Artie and Nancy and Chris expressed an interest, so I think it might make sense. Just have a meeting with them. To have a meeting, maybe Cliff and I and you folks, I don't think the rest of the Town Hall Renovation Committee is going to be interested in this yep. piece of it. We should have somebody who can advise us on usability projections. Yeah, maybe that would be Ernie or John. Mm -hmm. So let's. Yeah. I don't know if we can do it before Christmas, yeah. but I don't think I, I don't think I want to see something on front porch form until oh, of course, we yeah. have time to yeah. digest this That's, and see yeah. how we might yeah. approach other. Interesting I'm thinking parties. when the select board. My my thinking on this is when the select board decides yeah. that okay, we're ready to have this discussion. That we my, my concern is just that it be that it be fairly widely broadcast that anybody who is interested so that there's no even perception that it's been a closed deal. Right. Oh, everybody uh, no, who wants to have an interest. You're the ones everybody who wants to have an interest. Because my, my interest in this is not to try to jockey for my own position yeah. in this. It's as a person who's interested in theater and music, but rather to see it be a really open, successful process. Well, it won't be successful if it's everybody. not open. Right. So. Right, exactly. exactly. And our renovation committee meetings are open 8 o'clock Wednesday mornings if you have any interest Here. in yeah, everyone in coming. Yeah. Yeah. So those yes. are open to the public. Then I mean, you'll know what's going on. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank well, guys. thank Tom, you. I have a question for you, actually. Um, the playing field. I know they have the, the calendar mm -hmm. uh, on the website. Yeah, we have you website. can yeah. request, you know, uh, I'd like to book something there right. and whatnot. Right. Uh, how far in advance uh, is the space booked out? Well, um, yeah, they, they, so the calendar, you mean in general, how, it, I mean, it depends, it, it's really. Um, you might look and see like, yeah. next week and it's available. You exactly. Can, you can look yep, yep, I mean, it, there's no hard and fast rule about it. And it is, it is um, available on a first come, first mm -hmm. serve basis, which I think is a really nice feature of it. So you don't get into, oh, you know, who do we give priority to? And once to somebody something puts like something that, on it, somebody else can't change it? No, once they put down a deposit on it, they've locked it in. And yeah, I'd also be interested yes. to see what the pricing schedule is. Well, schedule. that's another thing. I mean, as someone who does theater around here a lot, it's um, this, this is very attractive because there really aren't that many affordable venues. Mm -hmm. And we do try to keep our rent uh, affordable for local community theater yeah. and community groups because we all know we're not, you know. Right. It's not Carnegie Hall, and we're not making yeah. <laughs> a lot of money, but you know. You just uh, have to have enough money to like maintain the building, exactly. fix things that are, exactly. you know, that break. Right, right. If a yeah. venue is going to mean over 130 people, yeah. we'd want those people to be the ones paying the rent on the porta potties. Right. You know, so some kind of a fee yeah. schedule. So like we that. have different rates for different events, and, yeah. and we're also very, you know, um, sensitive to somebody who comes in and says, you know, I'm really. Like if, like if somebody wants to use the space next weekend and we don't have anything booked for it, um, I mean, we have 
rates, but we also want to get income. And so if, if it's something that, you know, we, we, can, we can afford to just mm -hmm. be a little, a little so, uh, lenient on the yeah. rent, we'll do it. But, you know. I recently uh, um, gave up my position on the board at that well, Maple Corner Community Center. But after I've been nine years on the board, and uh, the building, um, obviously, the Maple Corner Community Center has been really lucky and fortunate, mm -hmm. you know, with the Men of Maple Corner calendar, um, and has adequate resources to it's preserve continuous. itself mm -hmm. indefinitely. But um, the board has always been fairly frugal in that and not wanting to spend down that money and wanting to, and has worked pretty hard to have the building sustain itself mm -hmm. through programming, and it really does largely to a large extent do that mm -hmm. um, and I think that the town hall could have that has that potential yeah. to yeah. be a building that can yeah. improve and sustain itself and that would be without great. cost right. to the town and actually no, I think that's possible yeah and that would be great if we could yeah. get to that and point. then would be a, there would be a symbiosis there because right. you know obviously there's a it's really great to have a venue for you know people that want to do shows and right. there's a lot of people around here obviously since the, the you know since the blue barn was insuranced and banked out of the picture right. you know well, we've yeah. talked about other uses too. You know, in the summer or in the fall, we could have farmers markets, craft shows. Yeah, yeah. you can make. Yeah, you know, certainly. Know. I would think the building could. You know, additional some. uses. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but, you, but but obviously the scheduling of that is going to be something that the select board's not going to want to do in addition to their. Staff, the town office <laughs> staff has made it pretty clear that they don't want to be doing no. the scheduling. I don't blame yeah. them. So we do have to come up yeah. with something. I think it can be worked out. I think yeah. it'd be great. No, I'm confident yeah. we can work it out. It's just yeah. we need to. Just put the brakes on a little bit until we get yeah. further. So let's wait. Let's just put it on hold and see what happens in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'll, I'll mention it on Wednesday morning that we had this discussion yeah. and we want to make it a really inclusive process. Yeah. And that probably Cliff and I would be willing. And let's say if we don't, if there's still no certainty by, you know, and there's nobody, and, and, and it's like we're looking at the, you know, at the, the where the job is and where it's planned and mm -hmm. where it's projected to be, can say, no, we really can't do this, then then at that point we'll just decide what we're right. going to do. Well, I'm hoping we can get these, as you heard tonight, getting those peers poured right. is critical. Yeah. So that's. You know, right. if we can get that I, done, then if that. If he's Georgia buggy, to be wheel bearing concrete underneath that building, I don't know why he didn't say, yeah, sure, we need your help. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I was him, I would say, yeah. I think he doesn't know what to do with an offer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I'll remind him on Wednesday. Yeah, tell him he can call me. I'll yeah. Yeah. All right, thank All right. you guys thank so much. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate everything. Thanks. Thanks for all you do, guys. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so let's talk about, um, there's copies of the budget, the preliminary budget there for everybody. I wanted to look at something when you're in there when you're done, Mark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Yes, and I have something to bring up under new business. We're not, we can't vote on anything, but I can bring it up under new business. Let's see. Oh, no, no, no. Where did my copy of the budget stuff go? Yes. So I had been making handwritten notes on the budget, and I gave all my notes to Sandra, and she's tried to incorporate them. So really, this budget is really like a wish list at this point for everybody involved. And Sandra's put in some budget notes. So at some point, we're going to have to nail down a date when we can get everybody here. And I don't know where John is tonight. He may have called after I left because I came in early. Um, and really go through the numbers and refine things. So let's start out with page one. Select board administrator. Anybody else want to take it? Not yet. That is what you're paying me to do now. <clears throat> if I get run over by a wild moose or something like that, it's probably going to cost more than that. Just keep that in mind that we had budgeted the 35 last year when we thought we were going to have a 
regular administrator. Now we're down to six. The next line is our stipends. Next line is Katie. I put in a little extra because you're going to be doing some, well, you're going to be doing some extra work for the PC, but I think that's going to come out of their budget, but that won't be until FY20. Mm -hmm. So just remember, this, this is FY20. Um, professional fees, $2,500. If you have credit card fees. Oh, credit card. Well, that's, I think that's a pretty set amount. Yep. Professional fees. Now, I always get this one confused because this is not the audit. This is not the auditor, I believe. Well, the real CDL invoices. That's what those are? Yeah. Pretty many notes here. Okay, so this is Father Gill. And that was to help when we were transitioning to um, Nemrec. Nemrec from QuickBooks and Melanie was coming in. I don't know that we're going to even, now that we have Sullivan and Powers doing the audit, the professional audit, and Barbara Butler, if we go with Judy's recommendation and our discussion, would be to have her perform some of the duties of the auditor which we balancing the monthly checkbook and whatnot. Um, and we budgeted in that line item. 25. Oh. Um, no, I'm sorry. 4,600. Well, it was 6,000 for this year and 4,600 for next year, which would, that would be, <coughs> um, if you look at number five, that would be Barbara at four hours a week at $22 an hour. It's on the back. Mm -hmm. So that would be in Barbara basically instead of the professional fees. So the so actually axing the professional down to, oh yeah, right. down to right. reckoning. Right. Okay. Um, legal fees, I think we should leave it at 15 because we don't know what's going to come around. Um, and is it good to have just a little bit of a buffer in there if we need it? But again, we're not, not nothing is set in stone. Well, so this is a place where there is a little buffer. So. There is a little buffer, right. Independent audit, I don't think there's any buffer there. I think we just have to bite the bullet and know that we're going to, you know, we've got Sullivan and Powers, I think they're on a three-year contract that we did. Mm -hmm. Why is it, where's the 900 come from? I think that was their estimate for the next year. Yeah, 17, 18, and 19 they did, right? Right. Yeah, that's a contracted price according to the notes. Yeah. And we've already, s have we've we, already signed it. Right. We have already signed it. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we did. All right, so that is absolutely We did, be we did but before they did the FY17 and 18 on it. So, 2020 is already contracting. Yeah. Uh, the website, that's a, I think that's a fixed fee, isn't it? <coughs> the 900? Yes. Education and training. And there's a little less in there because I we asked Sandra to put training line items like under the PC, under the Conservation Commission. So it's easier, it makes it easier to track. Mm -hmm. And we may not even use the full 800, but it's... Right. Well, but hang on, Denise. It says, the notice says for all departments except listers. Right, but we asked that she put um, training under... Well, yeah, she has lister education right there on page one. But right, are, there, but are there others that should be peeled out as well is my question. Yeah, that's what we had asked her to do. I think it's just a question. The note, the, uh, the note in the notes, mm -hmm. number two, for all departments except listers, suggests right. that only listers are peeled out. Yeah, she doesn't have it under the conservation no. commission. I thought we had asked to have that done that way. I don't see it under highway. Highway, I don't, I thought they had that. Yes, highway does have its own training. Oh, there it is, education training. Yeah. They've got a thousand. 
So that should be yep. listeners and highway. Uh, and then the question that we had on on here, see that was um, number two here. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what this root abatement thing is on 2C, but, oh, I see what it is now. It's different columns. Right. Yeah. Those are notes for FY18. I got tripped The way the previous treasurer used to do it was she had the notes like right next to the which was easier to to read, actually, but well, now we know. But now I get it. So okay, so we need Lister, so we need PC <coughs> and Conservation Commission training broken out. And so, in other words, and then what, think, what's left in that line is is does that that includes us mm -hmm. and the Office. In the town office. Where is the planning commission listed at all? Well, I did see it. It's I think it's like on the back. It's under line. zoning. Oh, it's under zoning. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh. Okay. Well. Yeah. Actually, it could be broken down into its own. Yeah. Planning commission, conservation commission. We could. Zoning. Would it make it easier? If, would you think it would make it easier if she did a, a planning commission bolded? Thing like we have for everything else because I couldn't find it either when I was looking yeah, for I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, do they actually work entirely separately well you know one affects the other no of course they do but budgetarily and budgetarily it's separate yeah okay so I'm gonna, I'll ask her to break it down yeah break that out Unless there's a really good reason why. What's a planning assistant? Um, I think that was to do what Katie's going to do to help the planning commission that we talked about oh, last oh, meeting. The typing of the right, typing. Right, right. Um, okay. regulations or something. Yeah. And we don't have an amount in there. You don't have any idea, Katie, how long something like that's going to I don't understand the full scope of the project, to be honest with you. Okay, like I looked at the document and I. I sent you an email, but I don't know anything yet, so. Okay. And zoning regulations? Yeah, I don't know how much needs to be updated or. Right, well, hope, well, hope she'll get back to you. She's usually pretty good about getting back. Okay, copier lease and maintenance. I think that's a set amount, because this is, what we just got was this new copier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mileage, dinner. Mileage, dinner. Mileage and then dinner. Where is? Well, you must be on the notes. Right, but I don't understand. One A, B, C, and then there's B and C. Oh, I see, okay. B is appreciation dinner. C was the root abatement. That was at $900, but I don't know why we would have another 900 I don't understand that line. Does anybody understand this miscellaneous line? No, I think it's root abatement, but we don't know we're going to have the same amount again in FY20. Here, I don't. I can't explain the 900. I think the. And how do we know? The the C. This is how I'm into understanding the notes. The C is an explanation. The the, the alpha, A B C D. Yeah, I got that. I Those just go with FY18 explanation. So she's, I think she's telling us that 3689 was the actual in FY18. Right. We budgeted 900 in FY19, but how do we know it's going to be 900 in FY20 is what I'm asking. Right, and that has nothing to do with root abatement. Right. That, well, that comment, the, the C root abatement is an explanation for the 3689 and isn't telling us anything about the 900. Okay, so I'm not completely crazy then. Close? It doesn't mean it's irrelevant. We might say, well, where, why was it so much more? And then we right. say, oh, because. So we need, we need an explanation of this. Yeah. And I miscellaneous really under. And if we want you, Sandra to come in to like the next meeting, we can schedule that. So it's just a question of where did the 900 come right. from? Right. Because at some point she's going to have to come in and give us updates on 
health insurance and things right. like that. So we might want her to come in at the next meeting. I'm guessing it was not, the question really is why did we budget 900 this right. year? Right. And well, why, and why she we, may not know. Yeah. Right. And I don't know either. So, yeah. so this is a question. Yeah. Yeah. And do you budget miscellaneous? Right. How do you know? Yeah. But I mean. And what I is miscellaneous? Yeah. I don't think we're supposed to budget miscellaneous. Okay. Um, we don't know about. You ready to move on to the grant match mm -hmm. section? I don't think we have a lot of information there yet. We actually did spend something on that today. Right, but we don't think we have the final numbers yet. Okay. And I don't know that there's going to be a greeter program for next year, and I think that CLG, um, they want to do a CLG for Adamant next year. So we got we need more we need more info on how, how to fill in these numbers. Who do we get the invasive species? Is that from the conservation people? Well, it went through the conservation commission, but it was really lakes and ponds. Colleen Bloom and Josh Mulholland. Josh is the state. Colleen was kind of the one that was doing the work and I don't know I know that he sent out an email um, so that he can close out the grant and I don't know where that stands right now but we can find out if that's been all you know put to bed invasive grant final town clerk and those were this is based on that request that Judy had. So, you know, we're not committing, we're not committed to these numbers, mm -hmm. but I wanted to put, have her put in, Sandra put in, what was requested. The big jump. Yeah. So that's up for, you know, further discussion. Um, 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 town listers. Maps. Doesn't seem unreasonable. I mean, they're the same, looking at the same salary as last year. And FY18, we, the actual we spent was 8800 We budgeted nine, for FY19 at 12 So we'll see how we come out. Some of this is just all like a guessing game. So for town treasurer, I had Sandra do the same thing for her salary as what Judy was requesting for the COLA mm -hmm. and at 40 hours. If you see note 4B, mm -hmm. plus a 2%, 2.7 COLA. And these are things that we are... These are subject to change. You know, in discussion. Right. So this is kind of our first look at this budget with some of the wish list numbers in there. Mm -hmm. And I still would like to talk further about. We we know Sandra now is working forty hours a week and not thirty two. So I have a hard time understanding how we would not pay her now at her current rate at forty instead of saying we know you're working forty but. We want to wait and see if there's money and we can give you a bonus. To me, that's like kind of, we're acknowledging she's doing the work, but not paying her for it right now. I think it's, right, no, I mean, we, we kind of agree. We, I think we generally agree on that. I think that the question to me, and this is, um, do we need, um, is this okay to talk about in public? I, I don't think we have yet. So probably not. Okay. Yeah. Okay, auditor. This is the town auditor. This is the Barbara Butler doing that work. Town report. Because technically the auditors are supposed to do the town report. Um, accountants world, I think with Nemrick now we won't need accountants world, isn't that what That's what Sandra said. said. Yeah. Delinquent tax collector. 
that's no change. Um, election expenses. I don't think anybody puts in for payment when they work the polls. I never do, but maybe other people do, but I don't think so. The delinquent tax collector, we, well, never mind. I think, I think we've asked, I've asked this question before. If they're, if they, if the backlog is reduced, but the fact is it could jump up again. Right, and it's still, it, right. it gets reduced because the delinquent tax collector. Right, she gets, works it. Works it. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, General office, Cots and Emmerich. Um, so that looks like a little bit more money there. Computer DRA, that computer DRA thing, that DRA thing. What's DRA? That's basically um, our IT Why does it say, support. what does DRA stand for? Um, why does it, why it's, do we have it? Has, it's like data recovery. recovery. Um, and I forget the A, but basically it's the services that are being provided to us by RV Tech. But it throws me every time I see this DRA thing. And it... Um, Why can't we just call it IT support? We certainly could change that, I'm sure. We can ask Sandra. And I won't, every time I see it, I won't say, what is that? The technical support. IT support. Technical. And just, I can give you. Yeah, later see. on, Cliff has put some time and effort into so that, looking at that things. number that you see there budgeted is based upon their monthly uh, fee, which and we'll increase. get into later, which includes the increase for additional data storage. And then she added um, an extra thousand dollars for miscellaneous charges, anticipating that we would need additional IT support, be it on site or help desk. Is that RV Tech's sort of increase of $120 a month? Does that include that? It's included, yes. In this price? Yes. In this amount, okay. Maintenance. Um, I believe maintenance, she's talking about. Um, I just threw out a number because I had no clue what to put in for Andy Felice. Did, did we ask him to get back to us? Yes. But Barbara was putting together kind of a list, a mm -hmm. spreadsheet kind of thing. Right. Um, and we'll find out on Wednesday how that's coming. We need to just, we need to put something in there because I don't right. think $50 a month is going to cover it. When he starts doing more Do we, stuff, so okay, but B, so but um, maintenance and facilities and maintenance are the same thing, I think. Okay, it says D. Where is she? Where says is in, the, D? in the notes. Oh, D is laptop, keyboards, and software. I'm on. I'm still on. <coughs> yeah, but that's that was the that's the twenty. No, but do you see maintenance, the maintenance line right after computer DRA? Uh, right, but that's explaining what it was in 2018, which the, the 7A and 7B that explain budget FY19 proposals <coughs> seem it's, to be talking different. about, they, well, they seem to be talking about the same thing. 7B is a $600 Reduction for, for the you know the Andy Felice's stipend and salary is now reflected in facilities maintenance. Okay, but where is okay facilities so, maintenance? Oh, well, I should, should say wages. But but either way, aren't don't they become the same thing? No, because what she's talking about this maintenance is computer. Oh, so this is computer maintenance. Right, and really? then the facilities maintenance is Andy, which is seven C. And 7B. <coughs> well, right? no. maintenance in FY18 included the computer oh. maintenance, but in 19, <coughs> it's referring specifically to Andy's stipend. Right. Uh, but 
now for the proposed budget going forward, Andy's stipend is moved into a separate line under facilities maintenance. Right, because I asked Sandra to make them his job thing. We right. want to see what it really is. So okay, so if we so her note says six hundred, but she only it's only four hundred dollars reduced, which is right minor detail. But whether it's fourteen hundred or sixteen hundred in that line that is maintenance. If you take out Andy Felice, what, what's what, left? What is it, it? So there was one theory that it's computer maintenance, which doesn't make sense to me that we would be taking paying Andy out of a line that we intend for computer maintenance. But well, I think that's what it was used for before, right? That line was computer maintenance. Is that she the has an explanation. Because it says it says right here, FY eighteen. Yep, I guess so. I guess and I it's guess confusing. it's confusing. So, but in any case. Does that need to be relabeled computer maintenance and we need 1400 or 1600 for it? I would think that probably what it is actually is um, janitorial. The Which cleaning is, of the office. Yes. Right, that's right. And facilities maintenance is wages. everything but it's oh. basically wages for Andy, yes. So this, this we can ask her if this is the office cleaning. Exactly. And so that we're clear on that. Yeah, if you write janitorial, that's even more clear. Right. Yeah, we can ask her to change it to janitorial. If because that's if that's what it is. Right. And okay. if it's not, then we need to define <laughs> what sort of maintenance. What is it? Right. And how is it different than facilities maintenance? Right. Right. Yeah, because we have a generator I maintenance, forget, I get. I forget who it is. Amy Rowell comes in and cleans the mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. Generator maintenance, that's a done deal. And there's no flexibility there. Is that right? No. Telephone and internet, is that a guess? I'm assuming she's based this on... That's just the phone bill, right? The phone bill and the yeah. internet bill and that stuff. Yes, but what she did is she baked in um, the additional expense if we decide to add two more lines to further yeah. support yeah. the new stuff. Yeah, because it says right here, in. mm -hmm. includes two additional lines based on FY18. Because we currently have two lines. Our new phone system is here. Mm -hmm. Is it? Mm -hmm. Which we've agreed we need. Right. So. Yeah, Advertising. So it for first day That's day. for what? Open oh. position? You did? That they used it for their first day. Oh, did they, talk, did they call you? I called them. Yeah? It was working. Um, Good. And they can we can actually transfer calls to each other's Great. phone okay. or to the listers. I think that's going to make a huge difference. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Advertising, that's, you know, just in general when we advertise. Oh, an open position or we notice the public about something. Right. Or, um, yeah, when it has to get, like, pub, something has to get published in the newspaper. Or the warning. The warning, yeah, that kind of stuff. Postage, that's unchanged. Supplies. Going up. Three, four, five. I think that she just probably jumped up a few of these numbers. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. because things are more expensive. Equipment, number 10. Chairs for office staff. Yeah, and I did suggest to the office staff that they contact VLCT because VLCT has grants for ergonomic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. equipment yep. and they were going to check into that plus they are thinking that really desks in there rather than these countertops mm -hmm. getting rid of the countertops and putting in desks where in the inner sanctum mm -hmm. oh. would help with the use of the space in there it's not a it's not a very usable space with all the, even though it's all countertops, it's very difficult for them to. There's no place to put anything. Yeah. Yeah. So they're they were going to check into some desks. We did tell them to buy a new clock, which they wanted, and, and a shade for the door so they can close the shade. Mm -hmm. On Fridays, if Sandra's in here working, oh, people yeah. are constantly knocking on the door. Uh, and so then she comes in here to work and can't get anything done because people are <laughs> looking through the window and pounding on the door. So we just thought if we had a nice little shade to pull. That says closed. Right. 
closed. So if they if they get deaths, then those counter helps will come out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we might be able to use those over at the town hall or something. Right. Wouldn't that be? I mean, we don't need to get off the tangent. But wouldn't that be part of just a sort of general overall? That's what we're talking re about. Rethinking the space. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what they're proposing is some of these changes like this that are, you know, minimal cost-wise. Mm -hmm. Heat and electric, that always goes up, never goes down. So do you understand what the difference between computer expenses and... Yeah, where is E? I don't see an E. There was two Ds. Uh, yes. Oh, oh actually, which helps, that's us that's helps us on the other problem. And that helps us on the other problem we were having. Huh? We yeah, were looking yeah. at the wrong D before. That's right. Yeah, that's a typo. The D, the second D should be E. Yep. Oh, that makes more sense now. And that explains the question earlier about yeah. right, right. maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, yeah, because this D talks about Andy Felice. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Good detective work. <laughs> yeah. Learning your ABCs. <laughs> we pay uh, tech. RV Tech to come in and dust off the keyboards. And <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Payroll taxes, I don't think... We don't have a lot of say in that. Like I said, um, we're waiting for Sandra to get figures on health and disability. Um, page three. Those are pretty much set. Um, as I noted last time, the LC, uh, CBRPC went up a little bit. <clears throat> um, zoning. Okay, now here's where we get into another thing that we need to think about. Um, John and Dot don't want to do zoning administrator work forever. I John I McCollum. John McCollum, right. Did I say Gina? You said Dot. Dot, Dot is the assistant. Dot's the assistant. Dot's the assistant. Okay. Right. Um, they're willing to keep continue for a little bit, but they would like to not be doing it forever. So like I told you before, I contacted Woodbury. I haven't done any more work with that. Jan talked to the Planning Commission um, at their last meeting, because technically it's the Planning Commission's role to find people, make a recommendation to the select board, not that we can't interview the person or people, um, but that's how the process is supposed to work. So the, she's looking for, <clears throat> Jan is looking for the current job description for the zoning administrator, which I think we did up when we had mm -hmm. a previous zoning administrator. Um, and, you know, is this gonna be enough money if we have to get somebody else other than John and Dot, if it's somebody from another town? And from another town, in some ways, makes sense because then they're not telling their neighbor right. that you can't do this and you can't do that. So anyways, that's a little up in the air, but we really need to be thinking about how we want to do this going forward and how much we want to budget. So think about it. We don't have to do it tonight. Um, we're going to ask Sandra to break out PC from ZA. Um, so we're going to need to get a... An, Hopefully, Jan will go back to Katie with an estimated amount. So I'll make a note to follow up with Jan. So we have something to go by. That's the Katie. I'm calling it out the Katie project. Mm -hmm. Um. Fire and ambulance, just a reminder, and I'll remind you again next week, but we're meeting with the East Montpelier Fire Department on December 6th at the fire station at 7 o'clock. It's a Thursday. To get the bad news from them of how much more money they're going to want. I asked her to put in Woodbury's request, which was that additional $40,000. December 6th at 7? Mm -hmm. December 6th at 7, correct. And say again there. 
East Montpelier Fire Station. And that's the joint meeting with East Montpelier Select Board, Cal Select Board, and the fire department people. Okay. Until we get the figures from the East Montpelier Fire Department, this line is, this section's a little unusable. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, oh good. Yeah, me too, but it's not right. <laughs> <laughs> um, police, patrol and safety, that's the sheriff, East Cal, Streetlight, Wilson, Stipend, um, CDHS, I have no idea, but we haven't spent much the last few years, which is fine, but. Okay, um, Conservation Commission. This is where I asked her to break out, because Katie's doing the minutes for them as well. And they're, um, Again, requesting $8,000 for the conservation fund as a line item and not as a warrant item, which is what we did last year. And I can't remember, I have to look at the minutes, I can't remember if they got the, if it was voted for $8,000 last year at town meeting or not. I can't I've got the minutes here somewhere we can check. I think so. Did it go through? I don't remember That's, that it didn't. I don't either. Yeah. Well, anyways, I was going to check. Well, let's see. Here we go. Well, and if it was a, if it was in the budget, not a line item, then it wouldn't have been a separate. No, but it could have been discussed and not approved for some reason. True. And I'm not seeing where, uh, when we talk about raising taxes from for highway and general fund conservation commission's activity the motion was called to, i think somebody questioned it was what i was remembering mm -hmm. but it still passed um, okay swim fund we just heard from them, town hall. Um, town hall grant. Okay, this is right. Didn't we, I thought we, we need to break out the reserve fund yep. for, the, for the hall and the office and make them separate. And I thought that we were doing that, but I don't, I see under here, under Town Hall, it says both. So in this current budget, mm -hmm. we put 30,000 in the reserve fund? Right, I think it was 15 for, I think it ends up being 15 for each, but um. we need further we need to check on this further. We also had in this year's FY19, we had a we had a big number. Was it two hundred thousand? That was a loan. It's a loan. Okay, so we and can't, that's going to show up separate. We can't show it as a as a didn't happen again, right? Okay. All right, insurance. Um, and one of my questions to, to Larry Smith that I have to follow up on is the value, you remember, I don't know if it was here or at a staff meeting, but Sandra showed me where they had the town hall valued at a certain amount and right now it's certainly not worth that much. Right. And this was at a certain amount and it's probably worth more. Mm -hmm. So I talked to Larry about it and I haven't heard much back from him on it, so I have to follow up with the LCT. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to underinsure this place, mm -hmm. or overinsure that place when it's not even doing anything. Okay, here's the um, here's your 
question about the loan, Sandra. I mean, Sharon. Town Hall renovation loan. I thought it was only two hundred thousand. Anybody else remember that it was four hundred and something thousand dollars? It doesn't make any sense. It's. Well, that's forty thousand. A year. Oh, okay, five seven years. five over five years. I was looking at it at four hundred and seventy five thousand. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah we're like <laughs> we voted for what? So yeah, last year was interest and all those together. And this year they're separate. Right. And didn't you? Am I remembering right that Woodbury said they might be coming in addition to them wanting that forty thousand, that they're also looking to build a new fire station? Yes, down the road. And that they would be asking us for money for that as well, right? Not this go round. No, but they would be eventually. Eventually, they imagine that about three years out, I believe. Okay. Social services agencies, Judy. And hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, can we the total the tax abatement? And earlier we had miscellaneous that had an abatement in it. Can we have ask Sandra to move that one down to this category? Um, Sure. Oh, was that, was that under select board? Sure. Yep, it was under select board. The miscellaneous <coughs> was somebody's abatement. The yeah, root abatement. Root abatement. Yeah, and that still that still makes no sense to me. It would make more sense if it were here. If right, as long as we're understanding what she's talking about. Move. Root. I don't even remember what the root abatement was. Uh, there must be people. Yeah, Gary right. Root. Was it Lynn Gary? Root. Was it Gary Lynn? But I don't remember what else it was. What it was for. Okay, move root abatement to abatement. Tax abatement line items. Okay. Okay, we're on page. So we don't have um, all of the social services requests yet. Didn't so that will be forthcoming. Have we reached out to all of these? Yes. That, that's our process? Okay. Yeah. I think Community Connections is now folded in with East Montpelier. What do you mean folded in? Folded into what? Is there a new name? You probably don't know either. I don't know how they're doing it, but I, I've, I've heard. Is that the one that come that the kids go to after school at the elementary school? Right, but now I believe I could be making this up, but I think that they are the bus them to East Montpelier Elementary School. Yeah. I don't think I am. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It could be the same thing. Right. It's just not offered at the school. Right. It's not at Cal's Elementary or Worcester. I don't think. There we go. It's already started. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Does not make me happy. Well, um, conversely, it could be said it's happening, you know, without without a force merger. It just needed to happen. But I, I think it's a, mm -hmm. it's a shame. It is. Okay. So um, I think that's that's it for this. Now the cemetery budget is, did we miss the cemetery budget? Did we miss that? I didn't see it. I mean, we don't get to set it, but it needs to be here. It's a separate line item? It's, it's a separate little, article? It's its own little budget. Well, the only thing on the whole document that has the word cemetery is line 200, which is where you just were at the end. Yeah, right here, right? Transfers out. That's the only item that says cemetery. So um, we don't have the cemetery, looks like. Unless we missed it. Okay, because we need to have the cemetery budget in the town report. I don't think we missed it. I'm going to turn the on here. Oh, missed it. Okay. All right. Over safe. And now we have a um, the highway. You see where we've broken down the operations manager mm -hmm. salary out from the highway. I asked Sandra to do that because it's easier to keep track of that way. Right. Right. Um, 
their training and education went from where are you? Highway. I know, but where are um, First paragraph, education and training. Oh, okay, there I see it. In mm -hmm. 18, it was 200. Yeah. Budgeted, they only spent 105. And then this year, it's a budgeted for 1,000. I'd be well, interested to know how much so I bet far they that haven't. they've used in six months. Yeah, yeah. and that might be an, a, a place where we can make a cut, but it'll be yeah. small. It's yeah. small. We have other things like that where there, where that that there's an unexplained jump from FY right. 18 actual to FY 19 budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I haven't seen one that was actually significant. Right. I mean, it's significant in its percentage, but in yeah. the actual dollars. Yeah. Right. It's only it's, it becomes significant when you add it up over right. exactly. all these other increases, and that's where we're gonna really have to sharpen our pencils. Um, if you look at, you know, there's nothing huge that jumps out at me at the moment. Colorado Road signs. Um, vehicle repairs. Well, that's, that one's missing a big line, though. Which one? The insur again, the insurance is missing. So oh, right, right. So we don't have the whole. The insurance is missing. Oh, those were the insurance yellow blocks. Right, yeah. right, with the orange mm -hmm. blocks. Right. The magic salt, if I remember right, was not that much. It was a few hundred. Mm -hmm. um, vehicle equipment, gas, oil, diesel. Does anybody think that gas and oil and diesel are going to go skyrocket? I mean, we're putting in an increase. But last in FY18, we actually spent 43,000. FY19, we budgeted 19. And FY20, we're looking at 16, 60 again. I mean, uh, 51 in FY18, 60 for FY19, and 60 for FY20. Do we think that fuel is going to go up significantly? What's, what's the projection? Do you, do you have any idea? Yeah, we think it's going to go up. A lot? Because of the tariffs? International activities, exactly. International activities. Hmm. Sounds our, like a spy novel. Our new um, foreign policy expert in chief. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Security. Why do we have a line item for security? Anybody? <laughs> Same reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. Sorry. I like that. Yep. Yeah. Um, hmm. So I'm just thinking security, like what? Do we want? Are we, did we talk about cameras or something? Where is it? I'm not even seeing it. Under garage. I think yeah, that's then, what it but was. They put, but there's no. zero in there. I know. And there's been zero in there, apparently. Unless they wanted to put up, like you said, cameras or lights or something. Motion, motion lights. sensors. We'll find out. We'll get it. <laughs> to highlight that we don't have it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Cool. Oh, I hate it when things are back to you back. I get so messed up. Maybe I have dyslexia and I just don't know it. Start the back and look forward and see if the same thing happens. <laughs> okay, communications. Um, blah, 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 blah. Insurances, we don't have those figures. I like this new equipment section. So, there we have it. It's going to be a big delta mm -hmm. when we get all those insurance numbers in. It is. Yep. It's going it's to be for real. Huge. And that will take your state there. Yeah. Huge. Huge. Yeah, it's going to be eye opening for sure. Ma'am? I can't travels with the state there. She travels with the state there. You know, and I mean, I mean, it's not what it used to be.
thing. No, and I will ask, do you think that next, I don't want Sandra to come in until we're ready for her to be here. Right, right. So do you think we're ready for the December 3rd, or should no. we wait until the 10th? No, I think we need, we need the whole, we need all those insurance numbers to really know, because the yellow boxes are going to be big, and mm -hmm. we don't have them, and we don't have, therefore, we do not have a bottom line. No, we don't, so we don't know really so, still right. But do we need her to come in and explain any of these numbers to us, or are you guys good? I think um, we can just have her answer the questions that we have here. We can ask her at staff meeting. Exactly. Or and then report back to the board. Yeah, the board. I'm, yeah, I'm more focused on the bigger picture and what the... Right. Where the... Where, you know, things like that one where we said, oh, that's locked in a three-year contract. Right. Like having the audit, like that could be in the notes, um, so that we know that there's absolutely no wiggle room right. on this one because we've already signed that year. Away. I would like to see the notes in another column over yeah. here. Anybody yeah. else find it? Absolutely, yeah. At that least for really FY. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, it's hard to go back and forth. Either, yeah, either, yeah, yeah, and then just and then she can print it in a landscape. Landscape. Yeah. Yeah. But that's. Um, okay, so where we have any flexibility whatsoever, even if it's, even if it's stupid, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. To know, okay, they're actually, we do actually have a choice there. Well, and that also is good training for us as we prepare to answer questions at town meeting. Right, right. We have to know what is black, absolutely black and white, and what is our discretion because... Right. You know, we're going to have to own how much salt we buy or whatever. Right. Because we do have that discretion. Yep. Yep. So she'll work on getting these different insurances? Yeah, I've already talked quotes. to her about it, and she was working on it, so I don't know if she's yeah. going to have them for December Workers 3rd, but... I'm not pulling that. I mean, we've got to have those numbers before we can really Build do... Even like if really. even if all we have... Even if, if we don't have them for next week, Denise... Hmm. If we could have for next week um, a placeholder number, even if it's carryover, mm -hmm. and then a bottom line. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The bottom of H7, what is it all, all what do all four of those FYs lump columns add up to? So we can see the, we can see a placeholder. The total, we want totals. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And you said the cemetery budget. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I made a note for that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I know I saw it one time. I don't know where it went. Right. Right, and then, yeah, and then that next to the unknowns in the school budget is right. a little. It's it's going to be a little. And I had and I had down here zoning administrator position, which I've already updated you on because it applies to be thinking about mm -hmm. with the budget. Right. So if I could get everybody to kind of think about this and maybe. We skipped CVRPC. Did you want to say anything on that? Is there anything on this one? Uh, no, no, no. I just put these down as possible yeah. updates yep. every time. Okay. Um, yeah, we've got the first draft of the warning. And like I said, the numbers that are in here for the social services agencies are just the ones from. I just copied them from last year. Right, right. Because we don't know. Right, now it's just the big arc. But I don't think if you... We haven't heard from Craig on the insurance. There's no increase in the Kella Covered Library budget and no increase on um, said Vermont Solid Waste Management. But the grand juror position is now optional. So I don't know if we want to just not do it. Oh yeah, let's not do it. It's just confusing to do things we don't. Have. Do you are you do you have the ability to make changes to to this document? That's a, it's in Word. Oh yeah, sure. And then you can just email it back to me. So let's remove um, the grand juror. Here it comes. For, for right now, why don't you just do a strike through so we know what we did? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And mm -hmm. was the law agent also optional? No. That was um, Jim said that the, because I double checked those, I had heard that the juror, grand juror might be going away, and he said, um, yep. wings have been clipped on yep. the grand juror. Well, well, and town's grand been, juror has been obsolete for a long time. Yeah. Now towns do not have to elect a grand juror or even appoint one. And there's nothing for them to do. They do if we do. So. Right. And looking at the other changes, the set, there won't be much of anything for a grand juror to do. The appointment of fence viewers and a pound keeper is also optional. So let's I remember that. I know where Paul was too, but I like having that on there. Especially when an inspector of lumber. Yeah. It <laughs> just makes you feel sleep better at night. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and this one here, you, if you can want to just put a note that. Um, Do we have that in writing, like from Craig or mm -hmm. something? Okay. Yeah, I've got it from Tom McCain, McCain, McCone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the library? Yep. He's the executive director or something, right? Okay. Yep, Tom McCone. Um, so if, can, can you just, where I say need to check? Mm -hmm. Just do a strike through. Yeah. yeah, do a strike through and just say per right. Um, no increase per Tom McCone or something. Yeah, I like that documentation. And then when we and see K O N E. Yep. K O N E. Yep. All right. Um, um I think the cemeteries were not asking for any increase. Article 7, this is about Poplar Hill. Remember we talked about putting an article on for um, helping them to maintain the cemetery even though it's private? Yes. I don't know what East Montpelier Select Board decided. They were deciding whether they were going to support it or not. Were we going to hear back from them? Yep. i got to check there. I know it was going to be on one of their agendas, but I don't remember which one. So I will follow. So can you put a note there, Denise, to follow up or something? Mm -hmm. I have to accept that. Mm -hmm. Another reminder. Did you smell clear select for it? Yeah. Great. Now, eight. We don't have anything to fill in there yet. Well, community connections, if it's... Well, we need to find out, right? We yeah. need to find... Well, and it doesn't mean that they won't want, want money. I mean, our kids are still going there. So, yeah. So... Can we put a note after 1,000 to check and see what the current... What this put status, find out status or something? Yeah, check status. Yeah, that's good. Right. And Well, and, and to be clear, if they're going to East Montpelier... It's probably not called Cal's Community That's Connection really anymore. kind of it. Like, there's still a Community Connection pro Program that families rely on. Right. So It would be interesting to know how many kids went when they were at, in Callis and when got it put at East Montpelier, how many kids stopped going there because the parents might not have a way to get them. Well, you can pick them up at Callis anyway. You had to pick them up. Too, so right, but still, you know, you got to drive to East Montpelier. I think the calculus was, well, you're coming from Montpelier anyway, so you can just go that way, pick them up. But because it's for working families. Right, not everybody works in Montpelier. No, that is, that is, that is, that is absolutely true. And it's a, you know, it's a disruption. They work right. right. But whatever, they didn't ask us what we thought about it. Obviously not. Or else this, they asked the school board and they decided. And my little footer got screwed up, that's all right. Um, okay, what's next? Yeah, I don't, we're not going to have any figures for this until after Judy gets all the requests in. Mm -hmm. I don't know, oh, I forgot to put a note. Katie, can you put mm -hmm. a note there? It's not Adam at, cross out Adam at Cooperative Inc., please, mm -hmm. and put in um, I don't know, it's like every so many years, properties that we exempt, like the Animat Co-op, and years. I wonder if there's anything um, to do this year. To do this year. Can we just, 
make a note, mm -hmm. um, is anyone up this year or something? How do we track that? Can we just look at the old town report? Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure how we track it. I'm hoping. Well, there's so many to read the old town reports, I would think. Who else do we give it to? We give it to um, Maple Corner. Maple Corner Community Center. Okay. Adamant Community Club. Right. Did we give it to? Oh, Maple Corner. Yeah. That might be it. There might not be yet. There might, there's not right, right anything else is for right. profit. Cliff, what's going on here? It gets to a mode where it does this, and then the only way I can cure it without constantly refreshing it is to completely reboot the computer and the connection. Okay, now let's look at this one here about um, the taxes. Yeah, I looked, I saw those emails. Is this right out of the text from last year? Yes, please? yes. I just changed the dates. Mm -hmm. Because I need to know. Are you looking to respond to the email? Mm -hmm. How are we going to? How do, so the first question is forget about the warning. How do we interpret the current language? Right. So I have an where, answer. Where is the? I need to go down to the one. Oh, about postmark. Right. Well, so that's that one. That is the only one I believe. Cliff, can you scroll down? We don't need the admin co-op, but I think we need, yeah, so we need the grace period one. Right. Um, so we need that one that has grace period and we need the one, yeah, okay. So, so one of them, the one that says that, the one that's at the top of our screen, shall each tax installment be made with, with, you know, with attention to the postmark. That, we're talking about whichever number that is. Shall each property tax installment payment be made by delivery to the treasurer by 4 p.m. on or before the due date or, or the U.S. Postal Service postmark made on or before the due date? So I think that that sentence could be clarified in its own right. Right. But then, so that is talking about um, the postmark for regular payments. For regular payments. Mm -hmm. And then the grace period, this is, does is, not mention... Uh, the, a postmark. Right. And so how that would, normal construction of in, interpretation rules would say, okay, we knew about the postmark possibility. We obviously knew about it because we incorporated it two lines above, but right. we didn't put the postmark option right. in this one. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that's that's what's being questioned in this. Right. We're talking about this email here. Yeah. And so how I would interpret it is... Now, this is the Craig line email that I asked right. Katie to put in the right. folder. So how I would interpret that is the same way that Sandra did. If we had meant to have a postmark, have a postmark you know, um, I don't know, credit for postmark, then we would have put it, and we didn't forget because we had it two lines above. That's how, that's how you would normally interpret one place in the law has it, mm -hmm. another one doesn't. So, they, so I think the so way that she's meaning. doing it is correct. I would interpret it the same way. The question, the question is, it doesn't have to be that way. We can add the postmark in for the next round right. and just... But she's been posting stuff on front porch forum, which I didn't have a chance to go and look at, saying that the grace period is 4 p.m. Right. On um, right. the 20th, is it the 29th, I think it is? Yeah. Because we don't talk about right. um, a grace period, I mean, having a postmark. So if it's, not, if it's not stated, then it doesn't apply. It's a reasonable interpretation that it doesn't apply. I guess I didn't see that email, and I'm a little bit confused here. She can call it. He just barely sent it to, sent it to me before I left to be here. Oh, oh, okay. It said, it said, Rose. Katie can call it up. Yeah. Why are we, why are we not interp Why are we not using the postmark for the grace period? He says as this well. runs, but he says this runs contrary to Cal's policy. Of at least the last few decades, if not longer, postmarks suffice for the IRS and state tax departments. 
but the IRS and the state tax departments don't have grace periods. So, and we, Sandra, we haven't had the grace period for decades. We've had no, it for five years, maybe three to five years. Yeah. So Sandra is saying that postmarks don't apply on the grace period. On the grace, on the grace period, period, which is the two week period after the due date. Here's the email. Postmarks no longer count. So what does that mean? Like if it's postmarked on the 14th day, no, that's so okay. That, or she has to have it in her hand. She said apparently she's saying that she has to have the grace period payment in hand by 4 p.m. on the 14th day of the grace period. Apparently. Because we, the 14th day this time is the 29th. So what she's saying is I'm not going to accept checks that come in the mail um, after the 14 day grace period because the postmark says the 29th. If you want it to count, get it to me by the 29th. Yeah, I don't agree with Sandra. You know? No. But why? We're already giving people a grace period. I know, but I, I, well, the, I that, think that it's just the understanding that you have a two week grace period and the postmark counts. But it doesn't say anything. Yeah. Don't say I know, anything. It, it, so it, yeah, so we need to clarify it. Right, or whatever, right, right. But, I mean, it's a callous person, right. and, and Sandra hasn't been in our town for a couple, three to five years when we've had this. And if we, no. if we put that in the, the articles, next, the next warning, Sandra will have zero issues. Sandra's right. just right. looking right. at Right, she wants it clarified. Yeah. Right. I mean, she's reading yeah. the article that we currently have. Yeah. And one has it. And one and article one has it. something about the postmark. The grace period article does not have anything about the postmark, and that's the problem. Yeah, yeah, so it needs to be clarified. Right, right. But I wouldn't, and just now that you've brought me up to speed, and my interpretation and what I know just from being here, um, I would assume that a postmark on that 14th day is valid. Not in her hand, and she won't accept anything else after that. So, so, so just my a couple of things. One is, Denise, are we taking Craig's word for it that that is Sandra's interpretation, or did she actually put something on front porch she form? She put something on front porch form, but I can't find it. I will find it before we talk to her on Wednesday. Right, because she might say, I, I didn't say that. Right, I do. I do remember her posting stuff, but I kind of just didn't really thoroughly read it. Right. Um, and contrary to what Craig says, it's not been the last few decades. No, no, no. We haven't even had the grace right. period. Yeah. yeah. So not I mean, every taxpayer in town may be aware of this change. It's not a change. We just didn't. We didn't clearly state it even in last year's warning. Right. It's her. It, so it could be like, interpreted either way. It's yeah, yeah. It, it yeah. I mean, I would interpret it the way same way Sandra did. But a different question is whether we have the authority to say to interpret it differently. Right. Is that our, is, is it within our authority as the board to interpret? Well, she's not elected. Right. But the so. but, but the word the article is as it was passed. Right. So who has the authority to interpret that language? That's a good question. Jim Barlow. <laughs> you, well, Jim has the authority to tell us who has the authority. Well, he, yeah, he has the tell, author, ability to tell us his opinion right. of who has the authority. Right. I mean, frankly, yeah. If we have the authority to interpret that provision, I don't really have a problem with saying we can interpret it the other way. The other way. But, I, but, but that is not a beating up of Sandra. Sandra is interpreting the plain right. language. Right. Uh, it's a, yeah, so the question is who has the, who has the authority to interpret the language? Um, I'm just looking at the minutes from 2017. Grace period to be established after the property tax due dates, blah, blah, blah. Grace period for the first two weeks. Grace period for the second installment through November 29th. Taxes come be being delinquent. We didn't even say anything about it. Yeah. Here is what Sandra has posted to the um, front porch form. Oh, you found it there. Yeah, it was, she posted this Tuesday. Grace period for payment in 2018. Cal's property tax ends Thursday, November 29th, 2018 at 4 p.m. Postmarks are not accepted for the grace period, and tax payments must be in the office on or before November 29th, 2018 at 4 p.m. And when did she put that out there? 
Uh, this was published on Tuesday. Tuesday last week. Yes. So, so another another point to Craig is um, more to anybody. Like she let us know. Oh, his point is well, people aren't on front porch form. They don't know that that's a change. But it's not. It could be debated whether it's a change. Right. Or well, not. we don't know how Donna. Well, Donna was doing. Well, we can find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And. But you know, I, I do need to get back to him, and he does raise a valid issue. Right. And she's probably doing this in her capacity as delinquent tax collector and treasurer. Yeah. Well, and good and for treasurer. her for yeah. letting people know yeah. and right. being really clear. Yeah. Right. And um, it's up to us next morning to be very clear. Right. Right. And she yeah. has raised that issue mm -hmm. um, in a previous discussion. So yeah. I think the question is who has the authority to interpret that provision, if anybody. Yeah. And if we can just. And I would be in favor of if it's up to the select board to have it this year that we do count the postmark. But now she's, um, our, but she's already posted stuff on front porch for us, anyone not. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think. So you don't. You, she'd have to go back and send out another email and post something else on front porch for and say, oh, sorry. We will accept it, and then some people are going to say, "Well, you said you weren't accepting it, yeah. and now you are." Right, but yeah. the question really is, what what is the harm? Right. If somebody relied on the on the front porch forum posting that the postmark wouldn't, which they had what a week two and a half, two weeks ahead of time, right. if they relied on the fact that the postmark wouldn't count, and they got it in ahead of time in whatever mm -hmm. fashion, whether they drove it here or they mailed it earlier. Mm -hmm. What's the harm? Mm -hmm. there's, there's not really harm. Nobody's harmed. Right. The only way someone's harmed is if a uh, delinquent tax um, starts being assessed. Delinquent tax penalty and penalty. Right. And interest. Right. Yeah. Right. No. Right. Because, I, because she gets it on the twenty. Right. I'm the saying thirtieth, and it's postmarked the 29th. But right. I'm saying if we have the authority to interpret the, that language to include that postmark counts. And we convey that to Sandra without making a big hoo ha all over town about right. it. Nobody's really exactly. harmed. Exactly. Yeah, okay. I can go. I can do that. People who pay their taxes on time without the postmark, I mean, they're all fine. I don't know how many towns even do a grace period. Right. It's, in some ways, it's caused more problems for the. It's, it's a petty point, but. I get it. But yeah. I'm just saying it has created right. some issues trying trying to be nice and give people that extra little time. Right. It's even though everybody else might have got it in on time. I don't think the I, I yeah. I mean it was trying to help people out. It was the best. <coughs> right. And yeah. so the we actually trying to help people out causes that. problems is yeah. let's just clarify the next time. Yeah. Right. Um, and let's figure out how we can most expediently make this go away for this time. Right. All right. So, um, going further down, I don't know who's driving, whether it's Cliff or Katie. But. I do think, by the way, actually, on those ones, when I saw the need to clarify, I thought just that we were going to, like, because I hadn't read the emails yet, um, that just the, the way that the language was written was kind of cumbersome, and I thought, oh, we could, you know, we could tighten it up, we could make it a little more Clear yeah, we could. The way it is. I think we can make the whole thing clearer. Just on what we are already trying to say. So right. I'll just put that placeholder out. And I actually made the edits, and I don't know where they are. I'm going to drive somewhere. Um, maybe you could send me yeah. your thoughts yeah. so that there's one person driving the documents. Yep. Um, okay, so further down. Okay, this is where we need to maybe get Jim to write us an article unless, and there's a typo on the next one. It's should be just asking them. Um, whether, because we need to talk about at some point, as Gia mentioned when she was here, about going to a professional assessor instead of listers. We need to be thinking about that as we're looking at the budget. Plus, we need to think about when we want to, because if it goes in this warning, then it's effective for FY20. And we're working on FY20 budget now. So we've got like half of FY, half of 2019 to go through. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we can do an article that would not hold us to a specific date. 
but just give us that authority? Should we need it later on before we have another town meeting? So I thought I'd ask Jim to help us with the wording for that article. And I think you had already mentioned that it doesn't have anything to do with the charter. Right. We don't need that right. to be in the charter. Yeah, I already asked on that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No. so yeah. the question is whether whether we can get open-ended authorization. Right. Or even yeah. even just like for a three-year window right. and then have it renewed or whatever. Right. 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 Something, because we need to have some flexibility. Right. Mm -hmm. I have so, a question, um, you know, pertaining to this, the assessor, assessor and um, listers and zoning administrator and assistant administrator, you know, Jan has kind of painted um, somewhat gloomy outlook or picture that, you know, there's nobody out there with this level of expertise or knowledge or whatever. Um, and I get that, but because are we so really advertising for this or how are we disseminating information? I mean, mm -hmm. we're always looking for volunteers for our mm -hmm. different positions, but you know, how do we know, you know, and I'm just asking because mm -hmm. I'm not in that circle mm -hmm. of Lister and Planning Commission and Zoning. How do we know mm -hmm. that there's not somebody out there or a couple people mm -hmm. with some level of expertise who might want to do this or a retiree or who I wants think, to be a zoning I think administrator? You raise a good point, but I also think that the Listers and PC, they go to these different meetings. There's been roundtable discussions and every town in Vermont is struggling with the same issue, mm -hmm. especially since the job of Lister now is so incredibly detailed and the state keeps putting more and more things that they have to do. There's right. so many different computer programs that they have to know and understand. If you could find three new volunteers, good luck, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, um, we see a lot of people at town meeting day and we visit right. and stuff, but right. you know, outside of that, it's like as a community, how do we reach out? Like, right. how do we have a job fair? You know, like, right. did right. you right. know Callis needs a new zoning administrator and we need some listers? We know, and, we could, we you know, could, so I don't know how we, we could draft something. Publicize up. We things. could have a handout at town meeting mm -hmm. saying, mm -hmm. you know, we could we could come up with something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I just, yeah, I just, yeah. looking yeah. for volunteers handout or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I understand and I believe her, and she's in a different circle than me, you know, with right. planning well, she goes and zoning. To all those trainings and stuff. Yeah. And I think that they're seeing how difficult and complex and complex and tedious and time consuming mm -hmm. it is, and they're doing it really cheap. Yeah, at twenty bucks an hour. Yeah, yeah, and that was another budgetary concern that I have mm -hmm. is that, yeah. you know, here we go, we have to put in, you know, yeah. we put in professional audits and we have auditors mm -hmm. and, you know, now and we have to put an assessor and we're going to have to put a hired zoning administrator making more than John and Dodd. And I'm, I'm really curious yeah. about how other towns, and, and I know we looked at East Montpelier, we looked mm -hmm. at Woodbury, we saw our neighboring towns, but other um, similar size towns. 1,500 to 2,000 mm -hmm. people. What are their, what are their budgets? But what are their budgets? How do they get their mm -hmm. work done? And maybe sampling half a dozen of those towns. Mm -hmm. So we've got those points of mm -hmm. comparison to say, okay, we looked at you know A, B, C, D, E well, towns from around the state that are about the same size as mm -hmm. we are. The VLCT must have. I know they have. A list of towns and what the population is. Right, so, so we, can we could just look at our neighbors population wise and go to their websites or, mm -hmm. you know, that's not a very complicated research project to just quick get a quick sample of how other towns our size are doing it. And if mm -hmm. they're starting, if we see some examples of moving in that direction, that's one thing. If we see budgets bigger than ours or about the same size as ours growing like ours, that's good information. Mm -hmm. If we see that we are an outlier, yeah. that's the information we need too. We can see if we can get some of that. It may be something that we can get Barbara to work on. That'd be a great project to work on. I think so. Yeah, because right it's now I'm, my idea. project list is pretty long and full. Compared to the yeah. Uh, if she has time, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah, we can ask on Wednesday if Judy can ask Barbara to do that. 
budget population. And then some towns have their, is our budget like literally line by line online? Well, some the town report is. Right, so yeah, so we could actually. Right, so I mean, really all you need to do is go and look at town reports. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of similar sized towns. Yeah. I think what I'm hearing from who I deal with, this is across the state. There's so many more mandates from the state who get some of them from the feds that, right. you know, then you've got all these things that towns have gotten in trouble for because auditors haven't, right. the local auditors haven't picked up on things that then they have, that's why you have to now pretty much have a professional audit just to, you know. Well, this is good data because this will um, give us the, uh, the rationale to explain it at town meeting day. Right. This is the reason why. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to pay to have an assessor, an assessor's office, an right. assessor. And other towns and, are doing the same thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But if we and find I think out it would be good, I think, right. before town meeting, we know some of these questions are going to come up. If we could all have mm -hmm. a document, and I'll, you know, I'll yeah. make sure that yeah. we get it typed up yeah. so that we can all have the same answers yeah. before town meeting, even, right. so that, because we're going to get phone calls individually from different people. Right. But if we're all saying, the same thing and know the same information, I think it will be helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And, and I think, um, to Rose's point, uh, f um, there's, also, there's also a lot of joy and reward, and we all value our small town. Mm -hmm. And so there's another, there's another way to look at all of this. It is, it is complicated, but it's, it's not insurmountable. And, um, there might be people. There might be. I mean, and I know that Judy periodically puts out a plea on Front Porch Forum mm -hmm. looking for volunteers, and I've done it too, and you, you get very little. People respond when they're asked. And right. They're asked. Well, that's how we have some of the people we have, because we right. cornered them. At town meeting. <laughs> At town meeting, or just. In the, in the grocery store. Or no, you say, you know, you, like, for instance, somebody suggesting how we should do something or they're complaining about how we should do something. Well, right here, then opportunity. You know, use your opportunity to help us out and volunteer. That's how I get a lot of people. They call and complain. Yeah. And I put them to work. All right. All right. This is all good. Um, we want to go into executive session, so I think we're going to have to skip the um, road naming thing again and again. Um, but while Jerome is packing up, should we do the minutes? Are we going to say anything about computer support discussion? Um, Cliff is doing some work on that, and it involves contracts. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to go into executive session okay. to discuss that as legal matters. Yep. Uh, but I'm going to do minutes first. I looked at the minutes, and I did not have any suggested changes. I had a couple. You had some, but I didn't understand, though. Even Rose had one. I had one. She did it on the and I, I She did, did it in the Google Docs. I did. Oh, it was Rose. called septic. <laughs> oh, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't. I, I failed to note the occasion. Yeah, that was my first <laughs> of Rose. You know, now there's no going That back. was my first SHIT discussion on Google there's Docs. No going back. <laughs> you picked a good one. But it's not, how come it's so big? It does that. I have that problem on my computer. Really? Sometimes Google decides it should be bigger. On its own? Yes. Oh. And then I have to go into the tools and oh. shrink it down. Up there in that little mic. Oh, now it's playing games again. We're going to go into executive session. Why don't we go into executive session and do the minutes after? We can do the minutes after, right? We can. Okay. So I would make a motion that we go into executive session to discuss personnel matters and legal matters of a contractual contractual nature. At nine twenty-seven. I'll right. second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.